Or... What is up, everybody? Hello. We're here. It's game time. And not just me and Julia are here. We also got Brian Miller. Hey. And the internet's best boy, Nathan Yaffe. Ooh. <laughs> so that's his classic intro. Ooh. Much like Ooh. people. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you. It's, I, I'm just trying to mash. I've made my profile picture on all social, uh, that drawing you did of me, Jacob. And so. It's uh, very good. It's very good. So happy. That's just the sound that. I, I feel like I'm making in yeah. the picture. We have to thank Butter Pecan 343 for subscribing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Butter Pecan. Yeah, thanks. Um, I don't fuck you, Butter Pecan. I didn't get shit. I don't shit have to thank him. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Wow, wow, <laughs> get wow. Wow, oh my god. <laughs> That's thank right. You. I'm a bully now. That's my new uh, persona. I am <laughs> a bully. I don't think uh, that's and Butter Pecan, right. get fucked. I'm coming for you. It, wow. it doesn't work on you, Brian. Apparently, we uh -oh. need to turn up our volume. Our, our mic volume? Yeah, someone said, please turn up your mic volume. Also, we have to thank... Who else, man? I think it's because you're just far away from the mic and not talking very loudly. Right, well, it's said for both of us, but that's fine. It says it says that, yeah, me and Brian are louder. Okay. I can also turn mine down. No, I, I got it, I got it. Don't you worry about this. He questions me. I got it. 300 bits from some ploops says, Big Bit Bitch back again. Oh, Big Bit Bitch. Let's go. Um, you guys want to play Monster Prom? Let's play Monster I Prom. I super want to play Monster Prom. Yeah. I literally, I haven't, I've wanted to play Monster Prom since the last time I played Monster Prom with you guys. Well, that was we the play, time. We, we have played this together before, and it was super fun. It was it was the only other time I've ever played this game, and Same uh, it was great. Yeah, was that great was time. a blast. So, uh, hype. If, hype if for this, this time one. is not fun, I apologize in advance. Yeah, but I think if it it's, will be. If, if it's somehow less fun now, I, yeah. I can't imagine it would be, but, you know. Uh, we're going to we'll, do make our own voices. No voice yeah, interjections. we're going to do our own voices. Our voices only. Four players. Full game. Full, full game. game. Wow. Who should be the narrator? I could be the narrator. I did it last time. Would you I like can... to be the narrator this time, Julia? I will be the narrator, the one who reads the best, clearly. <laughs> Shout if you want to tap out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can trade I'll... off as we go we, if we need I, to. We'll swap in for any role. I just, if... at some points, just stop being able to read, so that's that's the point in which we'll know. That's when we'll swap, yeah. 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 Julia, Julia if... can you not read? I'm illiterate. I just learned this. <laughs> Julia, was... <laughs> she misses words or changes words, which yeah. I think makes it more exciting. It means you have to really pay attention to the stream. I have to make a quick uh, announcement, which is that Ploops just earned a 5,000 bits badge. Who and wrote biggest of bit bitches. So Ploops is now the biggest bit bitch. Congrats, uh, Ploops. Congratulations, Ploops. Uh, we all applaud you. Ploops, um, I, I knew you could do it. We knew you could do it. Excellent work, Ploops. That was me applauding. Um, all right. Let's go, Julia. Let's get into this. What I was going to say, Julia, is if you pick a voice to do that is hard on your throat, if yeah. at any point you need to tap out, I'll do my best impression of the voice that you were doing. Thank you. Or I'll do what we've been doing in Wander Song, which is I'll turn into a vague Hank Hill. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the right way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, every, right. yeah, everyone's going to be coming more and more Hank Hill as oh, yeah. the prom grows closer Absolutely. as I, I think that's what happens in high school. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> Go for it, Julia. All right. Kick us off. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Player one. That can be me. Okay. I'll be player two. I'm the cardigan boy. I'm Flame Lady. My name is... Tommy, Tommy boy, and my pronoun is she. Let's go. I I'm the cardigan boy. Cardigan boy. I will be pasta. Pasta. And I will stay a he. Why not? Uh, Brian, who you want to be? Uh, let's see. I will be the. Is that a, a zombie lady? That's a Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Uh, the. Zombies yeah, I'll, I'll take the, I'll take the Frankenstein again. I would like my name to be Danger. Oh, of course. Danger. Do you want it to be all caps? Yeah, please. And a few and extra please R's only the please end. only respond to it as Danger. Danger. There we Thank go. Thank you. There we go. That's it. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Pro pronoun? Oh, she's fine. 
And Nathan, that leaves you as the Zambi. Yeah. Who do you want to be? Oh boy. Um. Can can my name be Ven? Oh, you're gonna Ven! be Ven. Can I be Zombie Ven? Yes, you can be Zombie Ven. Zombie Ven. <laughs> you're literally gonna be Zombie Ven. Okay. Oh, that's an inside joke I don't get. Uh, and I'll. Is there is there a, a gender neutral option? There is. You bet there is. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's. I think maybe the, you know, maybe just dead. Maybe the dead, more... yeah, dead is the gender. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. No, no discernible genitalia. Let's go. Great. And we had yet to experience the ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. I'm gonna fuck him. <laughs> Scott Howell, 21, <laughs> A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 400 whatever. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22? A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business it I was love clear that, that monsters go to high school into their 20s they're so yeah. they're they're far too old they just keep on concerned. going to high school forever and ever high school's a truly terrible place you can leave when you're an adult in <laughs> you're fact usually. they actively encourage it i disliked high school um it was clear it had to be one of them but who we only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Let's go, monster prom. Let's fuck monsters. Uh, that's, my, that's my job. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Welcome to Monster nice. Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. As always, we have to note the Caldwell shark. The Caldwell shark right, right there. Yeah. Everyone, please take a look. All minds are rotten, and they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom, stupidest quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. What would be the coolest prize you could find in your cereal box? The phone number of that sexy tiger on the front of the box? He's so passionate about breakfast and health that surely, he's surely also a great lover. Or, a sample of a more nutritious breakfast option, so people are encouraged to stop eating that colorful crap. Or, a tiny piece of sharp metal, so every scoop will be full of thrill and danger. Sexy tiger. All right, uh, I will take... I'll take the third one. The, the sharp metal? I'll take the second one. <laughs> Give me the second one. Danger. Give me the danger. You want the sharp metal. Danger. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go sexy tiger, why not? Sexy tiger. So charming. <laughs> I'm smart. It's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Option one. It's time to be a real hero. I'll lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to the party of its life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Nice. Or, nah, the world is doomed. And I'll start investigating, investing in ships and start a profitable business for the soon-to-be-covered-by-water world. Or... Global warming isn't real. I invented it. And now science is claiming authorship because science is a lame copycat with no original ideas. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I want to have a sun party. 
I'll uh make some ships. The world is doomed. Yeah, I also want the ships. Damn, all you guys want ships. You're well, gonna get money. We in business together. Get that cash money. If you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Tequila and Coke? Me. Double cream de la Gruyere and uh. Meringues. Meringues. Sorry, I got a twinkle in my ear and it distracted me. Spicy chocolate. No chocolate. No. Chocolate on fire. Success. Or rainbows and gummy bears. I would be spicy chocolate. Let's Success. be honest. Uh, tequila and Coke. Winky face. Winky face. Uh. Huh. Violent Sarcasm just subscribed to the tier one seven for the third month in a row. Thank, Thank you, so you Violent Sarcasm. I'll do, I'll do success. Why not? I like that attitude, Nathan. Yeah, I like success. Ooh. I like to be successful. All right, let's get into it. Tommy boy. So I got charm and I got fun. That's what you're. That's what you're up on. Yeah. I think what I'd like to do this time is get more money because I've never really done any of the money things. So I'm gonna go to the library. That's where you get money, right? I forget. How does money play in? <laughs> you could go to a store and buy things. And they like give you different ending options and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time, it paid off, so fuck it. You gain plus two money. Give me that cash, baby. Give me that cash. Later, you, Polly, and Damien are practicing batting, which is stealing bats and hiding them in people's lockers. But all that well-intentioned fun and games is interrupted by a blinding flash of light. Oh, who's this lady? Oh, we got these triple ladies. I love these ladies. Uh, should I be this lady? Who wants to be this lady? I want Brian to be this lady. Brian! There you are! Exactly the monsters we wanted to see. Well, needed. Not wanted. Uh, these guys again? They never want to do anything fun. We're not trying to ruin your fun. We're just trying to save the world. Univertica? is planning an attack. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, so boring. Ugh. Why am I even subjecting my ears to this bullshit? I'm going back to hell. Yes, that's what we need. Our partner on this mission, Rabaru, died last night after discovering Univertica's weakness. We need someone to speak to her spirit. Not it. Not it, damn it. You said it almost at the same time. But I'm allergic to helping. This is a serious health issue. But I'm prettier, so it shouldn't have to do anything ever? Guys, seriously, the world will end if you don't help us. We don't care who, but one of you needs to step up. Whatever. Just let the world end already. Then I won't have to take my midterms. I'm with Polly on this one. Midterms suck. Helping people sucks. Good luck with whatever you said your problem was. Well, the problem is the world is ending. You're pretty sure nobody wants that. But you don't really want to help either. Time to impress one of your classmates by forcing the other one to go help. So, what's the problem, Damien? Are you scared? Are you a spicy little red baby? <laughs> or, you know, Polly, saving the world is a great way to get free drugs and alcohol. Here's the thing. I have to use the phrase a spicy little red baby because that's something I would say in that real life. That is something you would actually say. So I gotta call Damien a spicy little red baby. Yeah. I am not a spicy red baby. I am a spicy red adult. I'm just busy, okay? I've got way too much to do without worrying about whatever lame thing you're talking about. The end of the world. What we are talking about is the end of the world. What is wrong with you people? Damn, well, if the world ends, I can't really beat the shit out of people or set things on fire. You win this round, Polly. He still doesn't look super thrilled about it, but he bounces down to the underworld to search for the coven's lost ally. After a while, he returns. Found your pal. She says Una Verdica is allergic to penicillin. Hope that helps, because it took a full 20 minutes out of my day. Penicillin, of course! We should have known! 
Thank you for this, Damien. You have saved the world. Truly, you are a hero. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Bounce off so I can get back to doing coke off the spine of my textbook before our next class. Well, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Truly, you are the worst. Here's hoping the universe stays safe a while longer so we don't have to deal with you all again. I can't no. stay consistent on that voice. <laughs> <laughs> you did great, Brian. I am all over the place. It's fine. You should have seen me yesterday. I somehow went from... Uh... Who did I go? Who, oh, I started as Mario and wound up as Julia Child. Yeah, <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> it's interesting. In a flash of light, the coven is gone, leaving you, Damien, and Polly in peace to not worry about that stupid world-saving stuff. Hey, Tummy Boy, thanks for covering for me. That was pretty spicy yourself. Hell yeah, it was. The important thing is you impressed Polly, but also the world didn't end, which is cool too. You gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. Give me that shit. Pasta. Pasta's up. Where you want to go, Pasta? Well, I can't go to the library because you went. I think... What do I got? Ooh, I got plus two smarts. I got high smarts, good boldness. You have what? as much money as me already. What does each one do again? They just determine who you can... Like, what tasks you can complete in what ways. Yeah, but doesn't each place boost like a certain stat? Oh yeah, um, I think uh, class is smarts. Uh, gym is, I want to say boldness. <laughs> yeah, Auditorium probably. is charm. I think bathrooms are. Nope. <laughs> something. Bathrooms are for pooping. Bathrooms are sure. for pooping. Auditorium's creativity. Yeah, auditorium's think... creativity. Bathrooms gym are boldness. Is... Gym is charm. Gym is charm? Yeah, and outdoors is fun. That seems about right. Put me in class. Also, uh, Con Radical 52 just subscribed to Twitch Prime for the second month in a row. It says, go bold! Go bold or go home. Thank you. Yeah, gym is charm, bathroom is boldness. Okay, so you want to go to class. Let's go to for class. For smarts. Yeah, boost my smarts. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after, what? Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity of this high school. You gain plus two smarts. I see Blobbert back there. Blobbert. Um, later, you hear Vera and Liam in a heated conversation which seems to contain some pretty sexually explicit language. So naturally, you go to eavesdrop. Nathan, you want to be Liam? Sure. <clears throat> Speaking as a male, I can say that... <laughs> Even I, even I grow weary of the infantilizing monotony of the male gaze. You should be Vera. Should I be Vera? Uh, you can be Vera. Okay. Oh, God. What voice do I do for her? Thank you. See, I want to advocate for the Gorgon gaze instead, but that would just turn people rock hard. That's, That's a not an joke. erection joke. People no, it was. <laughs> no. She called you out, we Brian. Know, we know what that was. Personally, I think hentai is the source of the problem. It's so unrealistic. Hello, I'm not a 2D drawing. I'm a real vampire. Can we just take a moment to shout out their, their winter outfits? They're beautiful. That They definitely weren't wearing those last time we played. Yeah, they're great. This is a winter prom? <laughs> Must be a winter prom. Ridiculous. I know. Even I can't keep up the standards hentai is setting. What? I'm supposed to just grow a dick during sex? And all the women are drawn exactly the same. There's even less body type diversity than at this school. Plus, I don't think anyone in real life has ever willingly addressed a tentacle as senpai. And what's with all the tentacles anyway? Because half the studio heads are krakens, Liam. And no tea, no shade to the, the women who do enjoy tentacle porn. I know at least three of my snakes do, but I won't out them. It's probably the hidden ones. Probably the hidden ones. But I do think there should be some more diverse offerings for those of us who like something less... Cephalosexual? Agreed. Oh, God. Hey, you got an option, Julia. All right, my options Oh, there's are... no win in this one. <laughs> Hentai should be more artistic. Redraw explicit scenes in the style of great artists such as Picasso or Magritte. Or don't send a misogynistic kraken to do a femme gorgon's job. You should open your own hentai studio. That one. Aha! Why didn't I think of that before? 
I'm always trying to mo monetize my hobbies, and I am partial to my superior aesthetic, and I like sex. The hentai industry needs more strong female perspectives. Shatter that freaky glass ceiling. I'm so glad I've already played this game before and really liked it, because this was my first time. I would be, <laughs> yeah. so, I would be fucking out of here, man. <laughs> yes. It could feature stories about three-dimensional women with lofty and exciting career aspirations having mind-shatteringly hot sex. We can call it Veer Animation. The tagline can be an Oberlin overhaul of over-objectifying Ophel. The two hurry off to continue the development of their hentai studio, thus improving pornography forever. Hooray! You gain plus two smarts and plus one money as a token of gratitude for your ideas. Good job, Julia. You made good hentai. Yay! Thanks. Just what you've always Send wanted to do. Send me to that fucking bathroom! Oh, send Brian to the bathroom. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. Fuck authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. It's me. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. Fuck yeah. You give plus zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Fuck yeah. Brian's going that bold route. You spot Vera and Polly That's discussing me. something. You, uh, you've got to get in on this conversation. It's bound to be something nasty. Hey, 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 hey! Oh, fuck, I'm both of these characters. Do you want someone to <laughs> pop in for Vera for this part? It's fine, it's a challenge. <laughs> what? Are you going to that party tonight? At the Dale... Uh, Dale the Mummy's Crypt? Sorry, I read ahead too much. The dog star has aligned with Venus and something, so his parents are being of pure energy for the weekend. He's got the place entirely to himself. I might stop by. Yay! Okay, so listen, Scott's gonna be there too, and I totally want to spike his drink. Now I'm interested. What are you thinking? Laxatives or Viagra? Gross! I was thinking something fun, like shrooms. Or shrooms won't dissolve in his drink, you idiot. You there, back me up on this. What do you think we should put in his drink? Yeah, make it something fun, like, like shrooms! So, uh, Moonroot, it introduces... Uh, it induces werewolf transformations. He'll be a literal party animal. Or, do you want to make him a laughing stock? Use that flower that makes a person fall in love with the first thing they see. We can make him fall in love with a chair or a house plant. Apparently, there is no option to not spike somebody's so you, you drink. You have to spike his drink. But uh, let's go. Uh, let's go with the second one. Let's use a flower that makes a person fall in love with the first thing they see. Can we acknowledge Christmas, Polly? Yeah, she's wonderful. Um. You've truly opened my eyes. All this time, I was trying to humiliate Scott with a digestive trouble and persistent erections when I should have been trying to humiliate him with love. Oh my god, yes! We can make him fall in love with a stick of butter. Or a bag of loose silverware. Or Pammy Pustules! No, a Scott's too good for her. He's too good for this world. That's why we have to make him worse. They end up making Scott fall in love with Dale's ceiling. He ends. He spends all night climbing the furniture, trying to lick it. You gain plus two fun and plus one smarts. Zombie Vin. All right, what's left? What we are got, my stats? You got the auditorium. We got 600 bits from Mr. Ranio, and I just want to mention that. Thank you, Mr. Ranio. Uh, Gailey Ray let's, gave us 300 bits as well. Oh, nice. Let's go to the. Uh, let's let's go to the tree. Let's let's the see tree. what's see what's happening over at the. At the outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes fully crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there's like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. Yay. Fun Nathan. Someone says they think the, the virus link is back. Can you go into the chat and ban it? No one clicked that link. Your right boy there. already clicked it, but uh, he's uh, he's uh, deleting what that automatically downloaded. I banned wow. the person that posted it. No one click any links. No one click any links ever. Unless it's from Your us. Boy. Your boy made a mistake. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> no, my boy. Okay. Later Sorry. that day, you're out shopping with Vera and Polly when a wild 
cockatrice appears. Oh, to you again. Oh, <laughs> it gallops through Let the mall. Let me narrate. I'll cover the narration for this. Okay. It gallops through the mall, biting shoppers with its jagged beak and turning them to stone. Scott and Damien come chasing after it, holding a butterfly net and a frilly dress. Nathan, you want to be Scott? Sure. This isn't our fault. We had nothing to do with this. Ugh, another mythical creature crisis. Just when I'm starting to enjoy my shopping. Aw, but it's so cute. I bet that vicious chicken dragon really knows how to party. Scott and Damien see everyone looking at them and wisely hide inside a clothing rack. What are you going to do about this creature? Ignore it or befriend it with a delicious cinnamon. Um... Also, um, no one rag on me for my inability to read. I've messed up I, three words. I, I think I think I must befriend the cockatrice, right? I think you have to. Yeah. How did you know that Cinnabon is a cockatrice's favorite treat? It gulps the tasty cinnamon bun down in one bite and burps happily. As you turn back to your shopping, it follows you. It seems you've got a new friend. Okay, obviously we need to take this hideous creature out clubbing with us because, duh. Well... I suppose that is a novel way to spend an evening. Wait, do we have Brian on any main character yet? I don't think I am. Oh, he was one of the ladies. Who, who he was else the witch. is there? What's up? We'll figure it out. Mm. Yeah, I'll take whoever. Uh, you take the cockatrice out to all the hottest clubs, but they let you in because they don't want to be murdered by a cockatrice. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. Let's trade places. All right, everybody choose an animal. Save your choice out loud. Okay. Rhinoceros. Uh, elephant. Capybara, always. I thought we weren't supposed to say it until after you click it. It says before. It says, it says before. Oh, all right. Giraffe. <laughs> it says the opposite word. Okay. Player order is decided based on how stupid it would be for a superhero to use the selected animal as their symbol, being something like selected animal man. So the dumbest one. Rhino this Rhinoceros copy man is pretty good. Rhino, yeah. I had giraffe. Giraffe man is pretty lame. Giraffe man is yeah. pretty lame. He can't do anything. Um, he can be very tall. Capybara man <laughs> would be very chill. Giraffe man can reach leaves at the top <laughs> of tall trees. Uh, do we think giraffe man is the dumbest? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then, uh... Capybara man or elephant man? Number two. Elephant uh, Capybara is number two. No, elephant man. You got any reasons, Nathan? Uh, because elephant man is already the name of a movie, and it'd be <laughs> stupid to be named. Uh, elephant man could be very, very smart. Good point. Also, also, Jacob got to go first last round, and I went last, and I don't want to go last fine, again. Fine, fine, fine. Let's go. <laughs> you can't, you can't write Nathan off. He's always thinking mechanics. He's always thinking. <laughs> Ooh, who do I want to sit with? Oh, this is a good chance for us to look at all the characters. Uh, maybe Brian should be... Oh, Brian can be the, the bubblegum girl. The, the fish lady. Yeah, the oh, fish yeah. lady. Bubblegum fish lady. Okay. I'll be the fish lady. Um, I kind of want to sit with the space prince. You want to sit with the space prince? Yeah, why the hell not? I want to tackle all these characters we didn't really get to see last time. You're just about to take a bite of your sandwich when some douchebag ribs a hole in the fabric of reality. Who wants to be the prince? It is I, the interdimensional prince! I have searched far and wide for a hero capable of solving the most fiendish riddle for me! The riddle of... How to get my TV to switch from HDMI to HDMI 2! I've tried everything short of actually using the remote control! You heave a deep sigh and accompany the prince to his dimension, where you solve his problem by using the remote control. You are truly both wise and generous. As a thank you, please allow me to teach you one of my kingdom's customary rituals. Perhaps laser communion might interest you? Or reverse baptism? Or eggs? <laughs> <laughs> the choice is yours! Uh, so my choices are, fuck, fuck that, let's make up our own ritual. Or how about the ritual where you give me a pile of cash and go away? Hmm, give me the money. Oh, you mean the right of poor fiscal decision-making? <laughs> Hell yeah. I didn't know you were so well-versed in the ways of my people. Of course, I'd be glad to demonstrate. 
The prince dresses up uh, dresses up in a gold golden onesie and hires a chorus of monks to chant, Why are you doing this? <laughs> While he hands you a huge stack of cash. The exchange rate of interdimensional dollars is actual uh, to actual money isn't great. Maybe because he keeps doing this. I mean, you gain plus four money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I got a lot of moolah. Zombie Vin, where you want to sit? Uh, I'll go to the uh, the ladies' table. This one? Yeah. You arrive at your chosen table to find Miranda folding napkins at Vera. Do you want to know what this one is for, Vera? No. I'll take that as a yes. The rose-shaped napkin is fold for birthdays between the ages of 16 and 22. Miranda's hands move fast as lightning, turning the rose into a gorgeous white swan. By contrast, this swan is folding for first weddings, third weddings, and swan giveaways. Damn, look at her outfit, though. It's a good outfit. That's a uh, good outfit, too. Hell yeah, it is. As a fashion enthusiast, I have never been so bored by a piece of fabric. Oh, and this black swan folding is for weddings where you plan to brutally murder all the guests! Not very popular, the black swan folding. Okay, that's sort of cool, but I'm aggressively uninterested. You happen to have some napkin folding skills of yourself. Maybe you can spice up this interaction. You decide to show off your most impressive napkin fold. If you fold the napkin like so, it creates a self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to fold more napkins. Or... This writhing snake folds fold is for when it is time to leave Vera alone and stop explaining napkin folds. Uh, to the first one, why not? Oh, that's adorable! Look at it's folding everybody's napkins. It's like a tiny adorable surf. Looks like it's folding the other napkins into more self-folding napkins. I know! It's so efficient! Go, little napkin! Surf be free! Aren't you worried this will turn into a self-replicating napkin scenario? Progressing geometrically until the world is nothing but napkins? Why? That sounds lovely! God, you're impossible. You seem to have mispronounced impeccable! Whatever. I'll leave you before the napkin fold takes over the world. Vera leaves you alone for a romantic lunch with Miranda. You can't hang out too long, though. You've got to stop those napkins before they take over the world. Tell me, boy! I don't get any stats? Wow. You got no stats. Wow. You fool. You did I'm... win the heart of what's-her-face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna sit with these, these fellows right here. All right. Leave I'm gonna go, poly. uh, I'm gonna go take a piss party. Piss okay. party. Enjoy. Uh, Liam and Polly. Liam and Polly aren't alone at their table. They're flanked by two beefy hobgoblins in the school security uniforms. What do these two have? What do these two have bodyguards now? Nathan. Nathan. They aren't bodyguards. They're food guards. Principal Giant Spider found out we weren't eating during lunch, so he assigned us he assigned guards to us because he thinks we have an eating disorder. And we do have an eating disorder. It's called being dead. <laughs> Except it's not an eating disorder, it's an identity and a lifestyle. Death style. Whatever. The point is that they won't let us leave until we've eaten our food. Which will be never. And I have a meeting of the Smug Superiority Club to conduct next period. I can't be late. If you could just figure out a way around those food guards for us, I'd be super grateful. Like, in a sexy way. Well, you can't say no to that. Time to enact your fiendishly clever plan. Dump all of Polly's food onto Liam's plate, or dump all of Liam's food onto Polly's plate. Well, I've already uh, wooed Polly a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to continue down that route. All right. With all the deafness and raw sexuality of Indiana Jones, you empty Polly's food onto Liam's plate and his lap. Ah, stop that. It's too much food. I can't even artfully arrange it for decent food pick. Meanwhile, I seem to have eaten 100% of the food on my plate. No problem. Nothing to see here. Luckily for you and Polly, the hobgoblins are complete idiots with no object permanence. They instantly believe Polly's lie. 
You traitors! I thought we were in this together! You thought? That was your first mistake. I stay high all the time, so I never think. You and Polly ditch the cafeteria, and then ditch school, and then do so many drugs you end up in a ditch. So responsible. Where's my plus responsibility? We gotta wait for Brian to get back to make Danger's his back. Danger's back. Danger's back. Danger's here. Hell yeah, buddy. Danger's, Danger's back. back. Danger. Uh, Danger wanna go see what up with the cat lady. With Hot Cat? Hot Cat, hot cat. is the store, I just wanna tell you. But is Hot Cat the store when you're in the cafeteria? I think so. I don't know that for sure. All right. If you want to go with Hot Cat, that's fine. Let's find out. All right. Danger. Like, oh, shit. Danger made a mistake. <laughs> well, you got some money. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. Look at the prices on everything. Let's see what we got. I have to let the chat know that I super didn't wash my hands. <laughs> you can afford How to Sexy 7 Latin. Uh, Done. You can afford a PR agent. Yeah. Um, you can afford a fake badass tattoo. You can afford mm. a Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. No. You can afford a corpse. You can afford... This is a free gift. A gift that keeps on giving. It costs nothing. Give it to me. You got uh Click that right now. You I don't even this? want to see the rest. I, well, want, I, I want to see the rest. Uh, fine. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Yeah, Julia's got all the money. An erotic fanfic about dragons. Nice. Dragon Heat, that. One Night No Limits. Dope. A blanket with two holes. Dope. And a motivational poster. Nice. You want this present? Yeah, I want that present. You got it, bud. Hell yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Holy I don't know what shit! That means. You oh, got damn. so many stats! Look at your stats! Oh, damn! Holy shit, that was a very good salad! I'm gonna. I think I'm going to prom with everyone. I think you might be going to the prom with everybody. I think all you, you can, bitches ain't gonna what? have any prom dates. That was an I'm incredible going to prom salad. With everyone. <laughs> everyone chooses a food. Holy Say your shit. choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Peanut butter this and jelly sandwich. This is the opposite sandwich. of my actual prom. <laughs> chicken soup. <laughs> Nathan's chicken soup. Nathan's I'm chicken peanut chicken butter soup. and jelly sandwich. Corn dog. Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, mashed potatoes. Player order is decided based on how filthy this sounds. Hey, darling, my your food choice is moist and ready for you. I mean, I said corn dog. Uh, corn yeah, dog, yeah. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I think I got to take that one. Yeah. Uh, who's in second? Mashed potatoes, chicken soup, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I feel like chicken soup is the one that makes the most sense. Damn it. No, chicken I'm soup sorry, is Nathan. weird, man. It's I would be weird. upset. <laughs> My chicken soup is moist and ready for you? Are you serious? <laughs> that would be it's upsetting soup. to me. I, I do like, as the chat has pointed out, Planet Fiction, the, the phrasing, my mashed potatoes is moist and ready for you, is pretty creepy. <laughs> that is Ugh. true. Let's go but with that. That's just my move in general. All right, let's do it. I'm going to give it. Brian two. And I'm going to give Nathan three. Okay, I'll go last. That's fine. And Julia four. Brian doesn't need any help. He has all the stats on planet Earth. He does have I'm all going the stats to date on everyone. I, I'm hoping this like backfires on him in some way in the future. All right, so the cat's in the auditorium. <laughs> that sounds like a code yeah, phrase. Yeah, it does sound like a code phrase. Um, well, I want to go buy something from the cat. I'm going to go buy yeah. something from the cat. Get, okay. all, get all the... I recommend the salad? Oh, the yeah. <laughs> Hey, last night I read this article about how money causes pocket cancer to run long to in the long run. <laughs> Fucking sorry. You don't want to get pocket cancer. Quick, give me the dangerous money you have in your still healthy pockets. Ah, oh, more options. I can't afford a penguin mask. Or oh, there's a gift again. Cocaine. Well, see, I'm I'm worried that it's gonna be bad for me. I'm worried that I'm gonna get it and it's gonna be bad for me. Jacob. What's the, what's the, the new stuff? What's we the got, business plan? Uh, a tampon Jacob, used by the former it. prom queen. Great. Gross. Just fucking do it. We've got... Be a coward. Uh, the Russian novel, a PR agent, and a fake badass tattoo. What's the one that's your 244 on the left? That's a penguin mask. Oh, right. Okay. But do I want to get... Should I get the present? Get the present. Yeah, you should get the fucking present. All right, I'm going to get the present. This <laughs> is gonna yeah. This is going to backfire on me. Like, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. 
It's a gift that keeps on giving. Drawing from a random kid. I know the composition is not that great and the color palette lacks depth, but fuck you, it's a gift. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Danger zone. <laughs> I wasted my whole turn on this drawing from a random kid. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Danger is gonna go to the gym and become buff because... You don't need anything else! Oh, yeah. You just need money. Oh, yeah. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit. <laughs> leading to a Chad's spectacular just yelling, comeback. Fuck you, Jacob. <laughs> 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 It's a gift, I know. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Fuck me. Say thank you and smile. Jesus. <laughs> You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. Oh, yeah, you need that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm going to need it if I'm going to date everyone. Oddly enough, you notice Damien and Vera are having some kind of business meeting? Hey, At chat, least... I'm dating all of you now. <laughs> They're both sitting holding manila folders. You move closer to see what's up. Now, Damien, it seems we both agree that Gwilliam is the Incubus. Is... One, one more Gwil swing. Gwilliam the Incubus is a piece of sentient garbage who deserves harm. True, true. I believe that together we could make Gwilliam very unhappy. I've prepared an action plan for a potential merger. Have a look. Vera opens her folder to reveal intricate charts with titles like Derision coefficient. Sorry, that also looks like a V. <laughs> it does. Uh, derision coefficient and maximizing humiliation dividends. I brought a folder too. Damien opens his folder. It's a piece of paper that says punching on it. I admire your simplistic approach, but I think we need a plan that utilizes both our strengths. Damien nods and turns over his piece of paper. On the other side, it says punching hard. These two are never going to going to come to an agreement unless you step in and mediate. So you tell them your idea. Use this convenient list I bought that shows all his greatest fears in order of uh, severity. Or, while he's sleeping, replace all his organs with live possums. What you think, Danger? Oh shit, I was not paying attention at all. Uh, <laughs> while he's sleeping, replace all of his organs with live possum. Get your head in the game, Brian. Oh, I'm so out of the game. I have such high stats, I don't have to pay attention. <laughs> Hot damn, why didn't I think of that? I mean, I've replaced people's organs with dead possums a bunch of times. But live possums? That's much more fucked up. It is rather vicious. But wait, fucking wait a second. What if I also replace the possum's organs with other live possums? You leave Damien to go down this rabbit hole, or possum hole, on his own. Uh, the important thing is he's happy. You gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. Just pile on the stats. I think I'm going to fuck Damien, but also whoever the fuck I want, because I am God now. <laughs> can, you, can you take me to the, to the money zone? Uh, I can take you to the money zone. Thank you. That day you spent some time on the library's PCs, managing your start kicker. Nice. You deceive lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. Nice. You gained a hundred thousand money, but almost everything goes to cover costs and you keep only plus two money. Fair. After, you're eavesdropping on Miranda and Polly, waiting for the perfect moment to mention your influx of Insta followers when... Oh, Brian, you're back. I'm back. Uh... Never fear, my ladies. You need not fight over me. Him again. This is also Brian. We got double Brian's. As Brian royalty myself, D. I really gotta pay attention. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> As royalty myself, I must say that even I find him to be. What's the term you said, Polina? Extra AF. Nice. Friendship between two beautiful maidens shouldn't be soured over as one as handsome, rich, and humble as I. But worry not, my sweet summer salads. Fuck yeah. I have found the perfect solution to protect your feeble hearts. You shall both marry me. I've dealt with male entitlement before, but this is officially next level. Yes, an interdimensional level. A collective wedding will be as well. Yeah, not interested. 
you are hardly the first prince to seek my royal hand in courtship, and I don't see that you're, uh, and I don't see that you're bringing much to the table. Interdimensional table! And I am the definition of marriage material. You'll never find a better suitor. I have a castle. I can defeat anyone at anything. I'll show you. I'll fight them. Um, is the interdimensional prince pointing directly at you? Why is your life like this? I can defeat you at any challenge. Name your weapon and prepare to lose. Brandon and Polly are watching you closely. Maybe you can skew the princess challenge to really impress one of them. You know what would be wild? Yeah. Naked fencing with live weasels instead of swords. Or, as a royal, you must fancy yourself pretty clever, so let's see you win at losing. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's try that one. It's This seems like the Nathan answer. Yeah. I'm not so creative. It's true! Royalty is very clever. I know, because I'm royalty. God damn it. Very well, then. Let us proceed with the challenges. Series of trials begin. You each post selfies to Instagram. The prince instantly gains 12 followers, while you lose 10. Round one goes to the home team, it would appear. Sorry for your... Uh, sorry about your unfortunate face. Next up are classic feats of athleticism. The prince kicks your ass up and down at archery, fencing, and bumper cars. Finally, you engage in a stirring round of Monopoly. The prince wins within six moves. Aha! Normally, Monopoly might last days, but I, with my incredible skills, have managed to win at once because I am a winner! Now, surely I have proven myself a worthy and winning groom. For both of my blushing brides. But the contest was to win at losing. <laughs> yes, I believe you really, oh, truly God have. I think they didn't bite on that, Nathan. That sucks. Yeah, I know that. Was I, I was like, naked fencing with what? <laughs> God damn it, this game. Yeah, I know that technically the point was for you to lose, but losing is a pretty big turnoff. All right. Winning is really much more appealing. I'll go ask my father his policies on polyamory. You can trust Miranda's father to put the kibosh on allowing his daughter to marry the same prince as a coked out Jesus. ghost. But you still looked pretty dumb. You lose <laughs> negative two charm and oh, negative no. one smart. Oh, like, buddy. You're the anti Brian. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Pasta. Um. This game. <laughs> Uh, creativity. I want to be creative. I don't know what I that think is. That's the outdoors. No, I think it was the gym, but I went there to buy things, so you can't. Oh, really... I thought that was Let's something see. else. Creative. Uh, yeah. Creative. It looks is... like it's the outdoor or uh, the auditorium. The auditorium. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay, so I can't be which. creative. Um, I will be. What do I need work on? I need work on a lot of things. I need to be more fun. Can I go That's there? Outdoors, the yeah. Yeah, let's. All right. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, you're, you're that. right. Oh, look at me go. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You spot Juan, the small magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan, the small magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different Juans in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You gain plus two fun. What a fun time. Look at the little look at Juan in the in the drawing. He's just having oh fun. yeah, there he is. You spy Vera and Liam engaged in their favorite pastime. Variation of people watching called monster judging. Uh do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boots do not go with a chupacabra fur. 
At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. We really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people are just absolutely hideous. But even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I have yet to see one who is the most hideous. I wonder what such an abomination would even look like. True hideousness is on the inside, in your organs. A person with their organs on their outside would be the most hideous. Or, a toned body, symmetrical face, and nice features. Because traditional beauty standards are hideously mainstream. Uh, what am I choosing? One of these two options. As to Ooh. what is the most hideous. What's the what most, the most hideous? hideous person would look like? Top one. Uh, not creative enough to. Oh, you're gonna lose stats too. Damn it. Okay, sure. G -g -g Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, with all the stats, you shut up. Uh, but do you know what else organs are besides hideous? Expensive. A person with their organs on the outside would basically be like a walking bank account. The majority of a vampire's internal organs are decorative anyway, so I find this entire concept immensely uninteresting. Uninteresting? When we're talking about a potential gold mine? Why, if we could engineer people who grew organs on the outside, they'd be like living, screaming money trees. And the enormous profits are anything but hideous. You know what is hideous? People with no understanding of financial gain, like you. You disgust me more than the annoying dick pics I receive daily. Scram before I delete you like I delete all of them. Wow, that got pretty ugly. You lose two smarts and <laughs> one creativity. You're so uncreative now. Shit. Don't try to do anything creative. No. That weekend, something happened to... Something happened to... Danger. Danger! Of course. God damn it. Brian just <laughs> went in the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Weekend time, you're with Miranda, Liam, Zombie Vin, and Tummy Boy in Liam's apartment. Hit me. Because tonight is game night. Fuck yeah. I'm good at those. Just this one specifically, because I have so many stats because of a motherfucking salad! <laughs> I got a, real cocky. A very good salad. Uh, Nathan, it's you. Yeah, I was waiting for you guys to finish talking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Damien and Scott are late. How surprising. Ring. Hey guys! We brought a friend. We hope it's okay, Liam. She's totally cool and into board games. Her name is Ol Olga. You do realize we can all see that's just a huge owl bear poorly disguised as a high schooler, right? Rude. Yeah, Liam. You don't see us accusing you of being a huge owl bear poorly disguised as a high schooler. <laughs> Scott is technically right. We haven't done that. Therefore, I feel inclined to trust him. Whatever. Can we play some games? Heck yeah. And before you even try, no, Miranda, we're not playing your version of Risk where you start with a huge underwater empire. It didn't sound funny, and it turned out to be completely unfunny. I do love the people in the chat who are writing, Hoot, growl, hoot, growl, hoot, growl. <laughs> Good fantasy high. Good fans to my rep. <laughs> uh, what about... No, not werewolf either. We won't play that until you learn you're, you're the werewolf only when you get the <laughs> werewolf card, and not just always. Right, we should totally play. Not cards against monster kind, Damien. It requires no strategy nor skills aside from making vulgar jokes. We get it. You like it because it's totally wrong. Today, we're enjoying a refined and complex Euro game. And you know it's a Euro game because we'll spend more time learning the rules than actually playing. It's called Chess 2. It includes deception, dice, deck building, an auction system, dozens of figurines, and hexagonal tile placement. I do want to point out that Damien has fingerless gloves, and that's very Jacob. He does. Mm -hmm. I, I love his whole, his whole deal. After three hours of learning the rules and an extra hour of proper setup, you start playing. But it isn't long before Olga starts wreaking havoc and destroying everything. Eehee, that's not nice! Okay, okay, brace yourselves. Olga might actually be a wild owlbear disguised as a high schooler. 
We thought it would be cool to sneak a wild owlbear into a game night because of reasons. Sorry, we thought it would be super nice and inclusive for owl bears. The fact that Olga is not an actual character is a upsetting travesty. to me. Yeah. <laughs> my apartment, my beautiful and minimalistically decorated apartment is being destroyed. Also, is she somehow winning? She is. You need to save game night. But how will you subdue a wild owl bear? The only logical way seems to be by beating her at chess too. But she's kind of super good at it. It will take two proficient tabletop gamers to beat the owl bear. You know you kick ass, but which one of your friends is also amazing at tabletop games? Hi. Zombie. Yeah, ben I gotta pick my boy Nathan there. Hi. Don't Hello. even read the second one. <laughs> okay. Zombie Ben oh, is the best at games. They play Russian Pictionary once a month, and if they are still alive, that me that only can mean they always win. All right, we're going Nathan. Hey, hey, hey Jacob, uh, thank you for inviting me on your guys' stream. I, I'm super happy to be here. Also, fuck you. I'm picking Nathan. <laughs> You've said fuck you to me so many times in this stream already, Brian. You come into our house. Apparently, it's the fuck Jacob stream, and I didn't even realize it. All right, I'm picking Nathan. You join forces with zombie men, and together you become a force to be reckoned with. You roll a d6 and get an 11? You draw a card that doubles all your points if your opponent is very specifically more than 25% owl. You get three trivia answers right, even though they weren't there weren't any trivia questions. Impressive. Also, the owl bear seems way calmer now. Yeah, Olga might be a wild owl bear, but she's not a sore loser. I loved the part where you got a bingo and then caught the duck trade halfway through your resources to get out a Jeff free card. <laughs> Such finesse! <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> I was the werewolf all along. That's another game, Scott. For what it's worth, Scott, you fooled me. But the real winners here are Danger and Zombie Ven because they showed off some very sexy board game skills and also because they actually won. Huzzah! And so you spend all... You, you all spend the rest of the night playing Dragoon and then some group uh, Consentical. Right? Consentical? Uh, because there's nothing as cool as dragons. Consent and tentacle sex. You and Zombie Ven gain plus two charm really, and plus one fun. They're really all about the tentacle sex this time around, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's into bizarre. That. At least you got some stats, Nathan. Thank you. I love stats. Enjoy I got. I think stats. I did. I get back exactly the ones that I lost. I think so. <laughs> it was a similar number. Everybody I think chooses I, an I think object. I had, I had slightly more. Uh, a, a vape. <laughs> Everybody chooses an object. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Nathan chose I vape. Ch I chose vape. <laughs> Chair. Chair. Jacob. I'm the object. Yeah. Wow. Don't objectify me, Brian. Too late, buddy. Wow. My object is a... <sighs> Lazy Susan. <laughs> Player order is decided based on how good the selected object would be as your only weapon in a battle royale situation. Oh, obviously vape. <laughs> uh, you can blow vape clouds in other people's faces. You can uh, use them to create distractions. You you can win people to your side by doing cool tricks. To be fair, I think Jacob would be the most useful in a battle royale. Oh, no, I gotta no. say, I, I would. <laughs> I, don't I think, think that I might be, be last place. I would feel very uncomfortable using my friend Jacob as a weapon in a battle royale situation. So then share. I think chair is probably the best. Yay! Only if you're strong enough to wield it. And then a vape think, anyone can use. Then I think vape. Okay. Lazy Susan might be even worse than Jacob. So I'm going to give it to Jake, to you, you Brian. You can bean somebody. All right, yeah, give and it And then I'll, I'll go last. <laughs> I could, like, pass someone a weapon very easily. Guess I... <laughs> that um... could be effective. Bring me to the money zone. You're gonna have well, to buy cats, something at the money the zone. The cat's there. That's fine. I got 12 money. I'm you sure can, I can buy something. You can buy the free present. <laughs> Good old pasta. What's it gonna be today? I could. I could present. buy the present. 
Julia do the present. Like, Fuck it, let's get the present. You want the present? Julia, get me the present. 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 Guys, present. Guys, present. 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 Get me the present. Only get the free present from the store. <laughs> Watch her get all the stats again. <laughs> See what Julia got. I'm gonna get negative things. That's how my luck goes. Oh, the shitter! <laughs> Believe it or not, this is a very religious thing. <laughs> you Amazing. got the shitter. Get Con fucked! Congrats. Um, I'll do... Let's see. I lost because I didn't have enough creativity last time. So let's get creativity. So you want to go to the auditorium. Yeah. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves had descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Way to nice. go, Nathan. Thank you. Sigh. Woe is me. Oh my god, she's Pete. Sigh. She's Daisy. Oh, she's Daisy. Could Miranda possibly be doing this because she wants attention? Only one way to find out. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there as I was standing here, suffering gallantly in silence. She did, and she wasn't, but okay. I had the most tragic injustice befall me earlier this morn. I was rejected from our school's water polo team. They claimed I was mistaken about how polo is conducted underwater. Excuse me, but I was raised underwater. How was one even supposed to play water polo without a heavily armored seahorse as a mount? How, I ask you? Perhaps I offended them when I implied that I uh, that they were too impoverished to afford sea steeds. If so, why would I love to make? Why I would love to make reparations. But it may be too soon for me to show my face. Would you be so kind as to take them to the, take them the gift of this omelette to <laughs> begin the healing? I am told that peasants consider eggs to be a delicacy. Um, obviously. And what would make the gesture even better is the personal touch of... Toppings. Caviar, eel, chocolate-covered sand crabs. They'll never forget this was a present from a mer princess. Or an elegant stenciled card with your sincerest apologies, a list of all their fears, and a bundle of compromising photographs. Okay, I don't want to fuck this up. Do people in the chat more familiar with this game no <laughs> no nathan no nathan no. Your pick no uh i'm gonna go toppings toppings so creative nathan. why yes oh. of course oh thank Chocolate god covered sand crabs the <sighs> food of my people nothing says fit for a mermaid princess like the breakfast of seafood as we say in my kingdom, wake up and smell the slowly rotting, the slowly rotting whale carcass, and then come have a bite before we head off to the day's executions. God damn, butchering that shit. <laughs> I'm sure you have a similar saying here. Thank you so much for your service, my hero, and Godspeed to you and your seafood-filled omelet. And make sure to take lots of pictures of them eating the eggs so we can all remember how generous I was. Sweet. I mean, plus sweet in that you now have to carry eggs filled with dead fish across campus to the water polo club's headquarters. But you did see. But did you see how happy Miranda looked? Happy as a clam who wasn't baked into an omelet. You gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Cool. So so there, uh, uh, let's see. Red Jaw Thunders asked if I am drunk. I have had two beers. Uh, but man, cold reading's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian, where you want to go, my dude? Uh, let's see. I want to go to the outdoors. The outdoors. I have no strategy. I'm just picking shit. You don't need a strategy at this yeah. point. Nah, man. I'm just great. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave. That goes full crazy. Everything is fine until Juan, the small magical Latino cat, asks what you think you're doing. Damn, you didn't remember you suck at dancing. But you decided to go all in and pretend it's a new dance move, apparently called... The Groovy Moussaka. Juan looks at you and he asks you to teach him the Groovy Moussaka. In no time, half the party is following your steps and joining the Groovy Moussaka altogether. It's a party to remember. You gain plus two fun and a cool Fuck story yeah. to tell your grandkids someday. <laughs> Just get, get all your stats above 20, Brian. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it, you assholes. 
Hey, you notice Damien and Miranda squatting on the grass, poking something with a stick. You rush over, hoping for a dead possum, but instead, you find them gathered around an entire tiny metropolis. Check this shit out. It's our kingdom! I call it Smalltopia! A tiny voice from the city shouts up at you. It's called West Pemberley, and we're not a monarchy! I was gonna just burn it all with a magnifying glass, but I'm happy Moran to stop me. It's good to be king. The tiny voice from the city says, We vote for our leaders in a biannual elections! But we are facing a quandary. How to boost our kingdom's struggling economy? Yeah, the whole place has been facing an economic recession ever since a pigeon stole the hospital to build its nest. The tiny voice says, That red guy stole the hospital and lied about it. I'm used to managing kingdoms that are significantly larger and much more underwater. I'm afraid I'm at a loss. Yeah. Hey, how about being our royal advisor? It pays shit, but you can take whatever buildings you want. Hey, says the tiny voice. Build a new hospital out of popsicle sticks and hot glue, or... You know what always boosts an economy? War. I think I saw an anthill over by the water fountain. Is this me? This is yes, me! God yes. damn, fuck! Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go for war. You danger. are danger. <laughs> see, Miranda, this is exactly what I've been telling you. The best solution is usually violence-related. You are truly wise, Damien. Very well. To war! The three of you investigate a war, uh, instigate a war with the ants by leaving a trail of syrup between Smalltopia and the Ant Hill. The tiny city is soon devoting its entire infrastructure to combating the Formic Menace. They build barracks, train troops, and construct missile silos. By the end of the period, they've bombed the ant back to the Stone Age with tiny, adorable nuclear weapons. The drinking fountain will be radioactive forever, but Smalltopia's new military industrial complex really has revitalized its economy. You gain plus one bulbous and plus two money as a bonus for your new permanent position as the Smalltopia Defense Council. Get fucked. How you doing on narrator, Julia? I'm okay. You want to trade off or are you good? I'm good, thank you. Um, fuck me. Your boy's gonna take a um a, a, another pee pee break for uh for the three hundred and twenty of you who do not know me, I uh, pee frequently. <laughs> Brian is our, our piss lord and piss savior. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, tell me where you're going. My stats are dog shit. So are mine. It is a problem that I'm currently having. Well, you can't compare them to Brian's. I have to. He's the only, the only, the only four All of our here. stats are dog shit compared to Brian. Um, he I got a magic salad. Use some smarts, so I'll go for that. Who am I trying to, to date? I'm trying to date Polly. So fun would be the stat I would need, but probably I can't really get any fun right now. So I'm gonna get some smarts. That day, your teacher delivers an amazing and creative performance that blows all your minds. It ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Your teacher gains plus 10 coolness, but who cares? He's not trying to romance, romance your classmates. Where is he? We hope not. But you also gain plus two smarts. Right. Yeah. You're hanging out with the two of the... With... Of the badass... Baddest asses. Sorry. I was combining those words and got stuck. Baddest asses you know, generally being bad and asses, when suddenly, a masked villain bursts in and threatens you. I have been waiting a long time for this confrontation, he says, following you, hunting you, waiting for the perfect moment, and now, prepare to meet your doom and pay for all that you've done to me. Oh, ah, holy shit. I've never done anything wrong to anyone. I have no idea who this could be. I've done so many things wrong to so many people, I have no idea which one you could be. Wonder no more, says the masked villain, and rips his mask off. Oh my god. Of course, it's that guy. The one from, you know, I mean, you totally know this guy, right, Damien? Never seen this dude before. He must have beef with Tommy Boy. I have beef with all of you tiny fools. It is I, Univertica Jr. 
Oh, of course. You know Verdica Jr.? No clue. You collaborated with your three best friends to destroy my father. Scott, Vera, and Miranda? No way. He means Liam, Coach, and Alfred. I mean faith, hope, and joy. I have no idea who the fuck those people are. Yeah, literally never heard of them. Puny mortals, they are classmates of yours who formed a coven. Oh, the coven? They have names? Yeah, I definitely always think of them as pretty much one entity. Oh, yeah, right. That one time, they made us talk to their dead friend, Rabaru, to get the secret to killing some lame villain, and it turned out that he was allergic to penicillin, right? Was that the dude's name? Univertica, and I am Univertica Jr., and now you will pay. Seems like you really pissed this bad guy off. Luckily, you watch fiction. You know how this shit goes down. Thinking quickly, you... Take this opportunity to reveal your real plan. You were only befriending the coven to betray them. Wahaha. Or recognize the symbol of his armor as that of your father. <gasps> you and Univertica Jr. are siblings. Okay, let's think here. I feel like the second one will require some boldness. I, but or will it require creativity? Oh. Or is this creativity? There's never any way to know which stat it's going to be. Yeah, it's... uh. Except for opening your mouth and releasing bees. That's that's boldness. That's boldness. We know that's that absolutely one. absolutely boldness. Um, I think I'm going to go for siblings. Do it. So smart. Smart. You know, smart. Junior, gasp. I, I had always heard that I had a long lost sibling, but tell me, boy, you, I never would have guessed. I mean, I suppose I do see the resemblance. We both have eyes, limbs. Torsos, the ability of human speech. Tell me, boy, do you have any idea what this means? I have a group on for a whole day of fun sibling activities, but until now, I only had... I had no one with whom to indulge. Will you come with me, new sibling? I mean, you gotta say yes, right? Or risk blowing your cover. Also, you're a broke-ass high school monster with very limited money to your name. Who are you to turn down a free spa day? Before you can give an answer, Univertica has spirited you away to a really badass spa for all kinds of evildoers. You get a really trendy virgin blood manicures and spider silk facials while wearing matching fluffy pink slippers and dragon scale battle armor. You go shopping for cute back to villainy outfits. And then at the end of a super fun day, you decide to see if Univertica Jr. can be defeated by penicillin like his father. And from the way he died after you slipped him some, you're thinking, yes, crushed it. It's plus two boldness and plus one smarts for you. And your totes keeping all the swag your temporary big brother brought you uh, before you killed him. Also, you totally impressed Polly and Damien. I'm going to date Polly and Damien. No, man, I got him. I'm going to be Polly with Polly and Damien. Nice. <sighs> Everyone Everybody. chooses something cool. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> they said something cool, Brian. Nah, man, you're you're the wrong one. Swords. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, explaining today how I had uh, two katanas in high school. Oh yes, dude. I, I was straight up mall ninja, and I'm. There are some regrettable pictures that I'm glad <laughs> don't exist anywhere. <laughs> I want to see those. Uh, I'm gonna go with yeah, vaping. Vaping. <laughs> Vaping. Vaping yet again, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good answer, I think, always. Um, I'm gonna have to say space. Space? Space is cool. Space, space is, is cool. cool. My right. order is decided based on how weird it would be to find the selected thing as prize in a Happy Meal. Space. Space, space is space. probably space. the weirdest. Space. <laughs> Ninja Turtles would be the most likely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I think vaping. Yeah. <laughs> And That's then me. probably yeah. swords. No, what are you doing? Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. You fucker. You go third then, I'll go last. Another point for danger. <laughs> I'm sorry. How dare you? I misclicked, I'm sorry. How absolutely dare you? Sabotage. Awesome. working for danger. Do you mind if I hop in the narration for a bit, Julia? Sure. I haven't done a lot of reading. 
Yeah, take it I'm away feeling, from me. Feeling fresh. Take it away from me, please, for the where love of like God. Where would you like to sit? Um, where would I like to sit? I'm not really like after anyone on this one. I think I have a shitting gnome guy. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, I have smarts. Who's good for smarts? They don't give you any stats, I don't think. Mm. You use your stats to. Yeah, this to is them. just for who you want to flirt with. Yeah, just for who you are interested in and want to talk to. Um, let's talk to Polly and uh, the, the fish princess lady. You asshole. Oh, were you gonna do that? No, I want to talk to the werewolf guy then. On the left there. Yeah. Here? Yeah. I feel like that's some collusion shit, man. <laughs> you were gonna go there until Jacob was like, no, dude. It would have cut off me and Brian. Nathan. Brian, you have to go there now. Yep. Uh, I don't have to do shit. I got the stats of a god. <laughs> You find Scott and Damien immersed in their favorite mobile game, Pokemans Go, based on the classic Pocket Humans. My my Reginald Bosworth uses income tax on it. Oh my god, look at Scott's outfit! It's beautiful. <laughs> oh no! My Lindsay Roberts never saves receipts! It's super effective! <laughs> <laughs> and now for the finishing blow. The... Wait, what? Reginald contracted lymphoma? Reginald's lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 999 emotional damage to him and his loved ones. Ooh, I win again. <clears throat> How did I wind up at the I... Pokemon table? <laughs> Why are all your po <clears throat> Pokemon so unhealthy, Damien? Because I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to toxic waste dumps, obviously. Maybe you should stop that? Where's the fun in that? Let's have another match. Who's this guy? Uh, Brian, you want to take it? Uh, sure. What are you two nerds doing? Nerding around? Nerd up, nerds! Whoa. Scott, is that you? We didn't even recognize you under all of that nerdery. What are you doing playing a dumb video game for stupid babies? But Pokemons isn't dumb. It's cool. Be because... Because... No way is Scott going to come up with anything, but if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Uh... Show them a phone equipped with Pokemans Go can also be used as a football. Or say nothing, pelt them with steamed vegetables. <laughs> uh, the top one. No way! I didn't know that! Was a feature of Pokemans Go? It's not. He's just going to grab someone's phone and... You snatch Damien's phone, heft it in one hand, and fling it across the cafeteria. Oh no, I've annoyed Hey, Damien. my phone! What the dick was that for? Yay, someone threw something. <laughs> I'll get it! <coughs> Whoa, bro, check out that perfect spiral on that throw! That's technique right there! Let's all install Pokemans on our phone right now, and then throw our phones at each other! The wolf pack bound off to play full contact phone tag. Scott soon returns with Damien's phone in his mouth. Damien's phone is pretty much destroyed, but Scott is so happy to be playing fetch with you. Danger. Let's see. Someone talk Danger. to Tony the Tiger. I want to talk to Tony the Tiger. Maybe okay. To to uh, Danger. We'll go talk to uh, uh, the mermaid lady. Yeah. Oh, you're going to block my, my move. Yeah. Block hey, it. Jacob. Shit. Jacob, yeah. fuck you. No, <laughs> fuck you, Jacob. Day continues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> fuck you. Polly and Miranda sit together, surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd of serfs. So wait, you've actually got serfs who eat for you? Well, of course. I find eating to be terribly undignified, so I almost never do it. <laughs> hey, me neither. What kinds of crazy serfs have you got? Well, I have a surf to go to the bathroom for me, and a surf to experience difficult emotions for me, and a surf for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. I even have a surfing surf to stand atop whenever I go surfing. Wow, that's a lot of surfs. It's a fair amount. The only limit is my imagination. Unfortunately, my imagination surf imagined a way to, a way to escape surfdom, so now I'm all out of ideas. Well, I'm pretty sure with the help of danger, we could probably think up a dope new kind of surf. Oh, is that so? I can't wait! Well, you're on the spot now. What'll it be? 
Ooh, Miranda, you should get a puppy surf. It's not actually a surf, it's just like 50 cute dogs. You should get a party surf, Polly. A surf to experience your hangovers for you. Uh, puppies. A surf? That's actually a room full of cute puppies? Why didn't my imagination surf come up with such a marvelous idea? I swear, if he hadn't escaped, I'd have hanged him by my execution surf immediately. <laughs> I'd have him hanged. As a matter of fact, would you like to be my new imagination surf? The pay is non-existent, but you'll make up for it in the constant fear of death. You politely decline Miranda's offer, but agree to go to the animal shelter to pick out a puppy surf instead. Huzzah! Zombie then. I want to talk to that tiger. You want to talk to this tiger. Who wants to I be want the to tiger? talk to the tiger. You're desperately trying to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach insists on striking up a conversation. Huh. Hey there, bud. What you drinking? <laughs> I love this tiger. <laughs> what? Milk? That's it? That's not how you drink at all. <laughs> Everybody knows the drink is the backbone of a balanced lunch. Yes. And what can we... What would we be without backbones? I don't know. My doctor yells at me whenever I try to find out. Yes. But enough about me. Let's get you juiced. <laughs> you can have sports sauce or muscle juice. Which will it be? Muscle juice. Both or whiskey? Um, oh boy. Let's, both, fuck both. it. Both. Both? Both? What a bold choice. <laughs> Especially considering that those two liquids combined create another highly explosive liquid. But you know what they say, you can't make an omelet without drinking a few explosives. Nobody says that. Bottoms up. You grab the two bottles from Coach and squirt them into your mouth. Cowabunga. <laughs> Luckily, your stomach is rated as a class 5 atomic bomb shelter, so you avoid any negative consequences. When your classmates see that you are literally willing to drink a bomb for no reason, though, they ceremonially <laughs> award you plus 4 boldness. Guys, this game might be delightful. <laughs> it truly is a delight. Um, so your options are to go to the store or... I could buy something from the cat. You could. I'm going to buy something from the cat. All right. No, I'm not going to buy something from the cat. All right. I'm going to buy something from the cat. All right. Hey, what would you? Uh, why would you study and prepare for your future when you could come here and buy some weird shit instead? Am I right? Okay. Those are the presents gone. I think I want to buy one of these, like, event, event items. Like, uh, should I buy a corpse or should I buy the dragon fanfic? I feel like the dragon fanfic is going to be for the vampire dude. You, you probably so, right? Yeah, he's into reading. And he talked about hentai. I think I'm going to buy the corpse. Buy the corpse. Let's see what people in chat are saying. Dragons, dragon porn, dragon fanfic. Some people are saying ghost sheet. All right, I'm gonna buy dragon fanfic. Let's go. All right. You know what? All profits are made. All profits made are donated to a good cause. Spoiler alert: the good cause is buying me a new phone. Sweet. Let's trade places. Oh, sorry, I stole your job. Player order is decided based on how shitty it would be for your country if you were the president. Start debating now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to be I'll fair, we'd bullet. all be I don't, infinitely no. better. I think Julia would be the best president. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty lazy. I think Nathan I'm... might be the worst president. I think I'd, I think just I'd miss a lot of the meetings. Yeah. You know? I don't think you'd pay a lot of attention. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I say Nathan. I think Nathan's the shittiest. Nathan would have good policies if Nathan showed up. Then is it me or Brian? Which one of us would be shittier? I would go Jacob for a second. I'd be, really... I'd be a great vice president. You would be a great <laughs> VP. The lovable Joe Biden type. Yeah. Generally, when Jacob says stuff, I'm inclined to believe him. So, so I'd say I, I'd go for that. So would I be more or less shitty? Oh, shitty. President? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I. So, yeah, I think I would be second shitty. You'd be second Brian shitty. Brian hasn't been paying attention even during the stream, so I say he's <laughs> second shitty. True. All right, then tell me then me. I'll be third shitty and you're fourth shitty. I'd have to pee too often. I'd have to pee too often. Julia, I'll be on your ticket. That's what people in the chat are I saying. I would love to have you as my VP. Uh, All right, it's li on Library. Library. 
That day, you spend some time on the library PCs, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares, and you gain plus 2 money. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, woe is me! Alas and alack a day! Miranda throwing a hissy fit? Must be Tuesday. Still, what else are you going to do? Study? Ha. Huh. Oh, hello! Don't mind me, I'm simply enduring the most horrible injustice to happen to anyone ever! You shan't believe such cruelty could happen at our own school. But just today, Miss the Loch Ness Monster told me that I shall be receiving a B-plus in her class! A B-plus! And all because I seldom attended! Does she not understand the importance of my daily royal manicures? Such a horrid grade will surely cause Father to cease paying for my seahorse insurance as punishment. And then, how shall suitors call upon me? Oh, the tragedy! If only someone knew a way I could, I don't know, perhaps... break into the Principal Giant Spider's office, access his driving computer, and alter my grade? Stick a web of flies outside the Principal's office. When he goes out to eat, we sneak in to cheat. Or burst into tears. Spiders hate tears. Hmm. Hmm. The web of flies sounds pretty smart, and I'm not very smart. So let's try tears. So charming. What a splendid idea! Crying is what I'm third best at! Miranda goes into Principal Giant Spider's office and, without missing a beat, bursts into tears. P -p -p Principal, everything is horrible! Could be because I I'm having a month of trouble. Panics, Principal Spider grabs a tissue in each of his eight arms and shoves them all at Miranda before fleeing outside. With him gone, you pop out of the suspiciously large valise Miranda brought in with her and hack the system in no time. Oh, look at that! I have an A+. I guess I underestimated my own amazingness. I'm very surprised by this development. <laughs> I suppose, as long as we're here, I might as well thumb drive with top secret school security footage. No reason. That seems on the level. Definitely don't ask any follow-up questions, just gain plus three boldness and be cool. Danger. Dan danger time. Uh, let's go to the uh, class. The class. The class. That day you were astonished by the new stuff you learn in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class could actually be useful? What a nice surprise. You gain plus one valuable lesson. Good luck trying to use that in this game. And plus two smarts. Fuck yeah. They're minding two your own over business when Damien now. comes rushing through, punching everyone who's minding their own business. Fuck, I'm so angry. I'm so angry I want to pull my own skull out and eat it. Do you want me to be the narrator? I'm so angry I want to set the school on fire and then punch the fire in its fucking face. I'm so angry I want to spend years accumulating political capital so I can become president and then use my nuclear codes to blow up the sun. And you, you're standing in my way. Move before I punch you so hard you'll remember with melancholy the times when you could move without all of your bones hurting. Uh, go ahead, Julia. Oh, no. Violence is coming. Think fast. Uh, joke's on you, pal. I'm a pragmatist. I'm a pragmatist. I avoid any kind of idealization of the past because it is no use. And therefore, I refuse feeling any kind of melancholy. Or, no time to think of anything clever. Start dancing for no reason. What you thinking, Brian? Oh, fuck. This is me again. Uh, okay. Start dancing for no reason. That's actually my real life move. <laughs> you have no idea what to do, so you just start doing a silly dance. It is really, really silly indeed. Before you realize, all your classmates have joined you in your silly little dance. What the fuck? Move or I will kill you dead, noob. We got a secret Nathan in here. Nathan. Oh, but Damien, you can't deny she is actually moving. Yeah, and quite the move she has. Hmm. Clearly even Damien can't fight against logic. Maybe you should move, Damien. Don't be a loser. Nathan. Yeah, as you just said, here, <clears throat> here you move or you die. 
All your classmates start chanting, move or die, move or die. Ah. Damien, frustrated by the crazy, mindless, but joyful mob you've created, finally leaves. Still, from afar, you can see an eternal flame burning in the back of his eyes. But for now, you gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna get everything up above 20. That's my only goal. You're Thank you everyone who monster. posted a Ven in the chat. Thank you everyone dancing. who posted move or die. Yeah, move or die. Oh, it's my turn. It's your turn. Oh, delightful. Um, I could really use some creativity. So I'm gonna go to the auditorium. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous. Somehow it enhances the path of the play in unexpected ways. And that's saying something, since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain plus two creativity. You're wandering down the hallway, reading Dragon Heat as discreetly as you can, which apparently isn't very, because Polly and Vera clock this immediately. Oh, uh, are you actually reading erotic fanfiction about dragons? Because we love Dragon Heat. I'm all, I'm all about 19th century Russian literature, but a ghost girl can't say no to some erotic fanfic, am I right? I've literally been working on my Morgana Von Brustrich cosplay all week. I'm gonna go Breastreich. It is Breastreich, but I, you know, there was a lot going on. Don't worry about why. I couldn't do the accent with it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Polly. I don't... I've never... Okay, I'm finally ready to Dragon Heat, but don't go around telling people. Psst. Psst. We're clearly safe with her. A fellow dragon file who can always be trusted. Are you sure? I mean, anyone into Dragon Heat must have a wicked mind. 297 chapters and counting, and it still manages to amaze me with all the new levels of wrong. Yeah, right? I fucking love it. Yet I must admit, I'm a bit vanilla when it comes to the fave chapters. Mine is the one where Reginald McDonald Reginald. Harold. <laughs> Reginald? <laughs> Sorry, I was combining deranged below that. <laughs> Reginald. Harold McDonald Horace the Hydra and the deranged Draco Delacourt have to rest on an inn after the Choking Bay adventure. What fanfics you've been reading with a Reginald uh, McDonghard in it? <laughs> no. Only to discover they have one available bed. There's only one bed, the classic fanfic treat that never fails. Ha. Yes, that's that one was good. I personally prefer the one where Venisaria unmasks her mass savior after a passionate kiss only to discover it's herself and then they really and then they totally bang i need water i'm not a fan of time travel but sign me up for some good self cess amen what about you tummy boy what's your favorite story arc nothing to worry about you'll just be re revealing your inner kinks to us no pressure we got Easy, the Sex Caliber arc, where they want to discover the chosen one who can control the mythical Sex Caliber dildo, and they have a super orgy so everyone can have their turn with the dildo. Jesus or what about Christ. this exclusive chapter I've written myself? I don't think I'm creative <laughs> enough for that. I think I would lose creativity on that. So I'm gonna go for Sex Caliber. Whoa, right? How could we forget about the Sex Caliber arc? With 297 chapters, it's rather easy to forget some arcs. Yeah, but that one was epic. The tension and thrill of wondering who would be the chosen one each time someone used the magical dildo? I must admit, it was very lubricating. Mm. No. Also, I should praise the fact that it was entirely written from the viewpoint of the dildo. No. Who would have thought? <laughs> Tummy Boy here is such a kinky deviant. Maybe we should do our own sex caliber trial no. one day, huh? <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves here yet. But I might or might not have a an official sex caliber dildo myself. It's hard to say no to dragon dildos. I'm the one who keeps having to say it, Brian! <laughs> Fuck yeah. And you know, I'm blaming you somehow. <laughs> you didn't write it. And I didn't write this game, nor do I want to say it. 
<laughs> All those years of insecurity, and it turns out that erotic dragon fanfics were the ultimate icebreaker. Here, have plus two smarts and plus one fun to celebrate your unexpected discovery. I can't even judge that hard. I learned entirely about sex from uh, Digimon sex fanfiction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, that was what 11 year old Brian was fucking pulling his goddamn knob to <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it's so bad man just children writing about sex for other children no, horrible but I think we've all been there Brian! <laughs> not specifically with Digimon but we have been you there you all know what the fuck is up <laughs> everyone in the chat like Brian no you all fucking no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Julia, where do you want to go? Um, bring me to the gym. I gotta, I gotta. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. I gotta cool off. The match is so intense, and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. That commitment amazes your whole team, and their spirit is fueled by determination. Finally, you win and take plus two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. You're intrigued by your new little toy when you feel the temperature oddly rising. Are you catching a fever, or is it... Hey, dumbass, what's that? Why are you playing with a little guy taking a shit? Is it some kind of weird new G.I. Joe? Oh my god! <laughs> the shitter comes into play! He loves my little shitter! Nathan. Ah, a classic mistake. No, Damien, this is called a Kaganer. You wouldn't know, of course, it means shitter. It's a religious thing from the Spanish region of Catalonia. Wait, rewind. How is this poopy boy a religious thing? <laughs> well, you know about the nativity scene, right? Catholic people reenacting Jesus' birth and all during Christmas. Lame. Shut up. The thing is, in Catalonia, Christians build the nativity scene for Christmas with Mary, baby Jesus, the animals, and of course, this random guy taking a shit nearby, behind a bush or something. It is some kind of prank or something? Oh no, it's a very serious thing among Cat Catalans. If you want to make uh, the nativity scene, you better include the Caganer. It's the culturally respectful thing to do. Ha! Respectful to whom? God damn it, this is priceless. Kaganer? Love it. The ultimate action figure. I mean, it fucking beats the lameness out of Christianity and everything. One could say that, I guess. But why did these Catalan people decide to put a guy taking a shit next to the birth of Jesus Christ? Hmm, good question. Nobody knows. It's a tradition that has been there for centuries, but no one knows its origins. Catalan people just go for it because it has been done like that since forever. Nobody knows why they put this shitter next to Jesus and yet they've done it for centuries? I must know. <laughs> the intrigue is killing me! Gah! Well, it really looks as if it was about to kill him by giving him a seizure. Maybe you can help solve the mystery. Catch a real shitter and interrogate them about it. <laughs> Get into the mind of the shitter by reenacting the scene. My creativity is shit. Yes. So I'm gonna have to go with the first one. Catch a shitter. To catch, a, to shitter. catch a shitter. To catch a shitter. <laughs> yeah. Before Damien's head implodes, you take both him and Liam into your car. And just to be clear by your car, I mean just a car. But fuck the concept of ownership, am I right? You drive to a nearby gas station, rush into the public restrooms, and draw an innocent guy who is taking a shit in there. Then you drive into the nearest police station, and you politely ask to use one of their interrogation rooms. As you've been an exemplary monster citizen lately, by committing not that many murders, they decide to reward you with their best interrogation room. And so you go into full interrogation mode by playing the classic bad cop, worst cop strategy. You, fucko, tell us the truth. Why did the Catalan put a shitter dude next to the birth of Jesus? What? Who are you? Why am I here? I need to finish pooping, please. <laughs> you won't finish shit till you answer us, fucking fucko! <laughs> Damien then hits the random guy with a rolled newspaper. You do realize this plan makes zero sense, right? His confession makes zero sense. And you, you better start spilling the tea or we will punish you in ways you never imagined you could be punished. Who are these Catalans? I swear I never pooped next to Jesus. I just want to go back to my family and also finish pooping, please. Yeah, yeah, never poop next to Jesus. That's what everyone says. 
You know what? My patience has a limit. Give me that. Damien steals the poor guy's passport and starts doodling on it. See? I'm not bluffing, fucko. Now you're banned for visiting Sweden. Keep fucking with me and you can start forgetting about visiting Portugal. The dude starts crying, even though all Damien has done is doodled an angry face in his passport and scribbled, I'm a stupid fucko on it. <laughs> I'm very Can tickled we, by this that's, video that's game. That's good bullying. <laughs> Can we agree this is going nowhere? You know what, Liam? Sometimes you're right. Sometimes justice is not served. This is a grim, dark world. Let's regroup and think of a way to crack this case. Finally! And you, Pasta. Brilliant plan. You're like the ultimate detective or something. But this seems to be the fucking mother of all mysteries. I think we have a long way ahead. Get ready and buy some snacks. It was definitely a dumb plan, but whatever. You got to steal a car and make some weird memories with Damien and Liam. Cheers to that. You gained plus two smarts and plus one bullets. I'm so smart! I'm so glad your shitter came in handy. Yay! Something happened to... Zombie Ben! Ooh! What happened to me? Do you want me to be narrated? Oh, right? good, yeah. Jacob? I'm good for the moment. Okay. On Saturday night, you're at a cool pizza place that cooks pizza in a real pizza oven. Little did you expect that when the chef opens the oven to get your pizza, Damien appears from the flames. How does that work? Can he teleport through fire? Has he been waiting inside the oven all this time just to make a kick-ass entrance? Ah, the mystery. My dude! I fucking hate needing people's help, but I might need yours. Don't let it get to your head or I'll stab you so I don't have to owe you anything. Enough threats. Here's the deal, fuckhead. I might or might not feel attracted by your buddy Danger. Well, of course. He's got all the stats. You know the one. <laughs> always making absurd choices, right. being equal parts stupidly sexy and sexily stupid, and with a nice booty. Mm -hmm. That's me. But I don't want to get my feelings hurt by rushing into love without proper judgment. My dads always say, if you love someone, shoot them and see what happens. Great fatherly advice, right? Mm-hmm. Thing is, Principal Giant Spider, my therapist, and the rule of law all seem to think that shooting someone to check if they are the one is not very legal. Don't shoot me, baby. They have strongly recommended that I do all that on what they call a theoretical level, like imagining the whole thing. But imagining is for losers, and since you both know danger and are and are a loser yourself, I thought you could tell me. What would danger do if I were to shoot her? Danger is all about getting shot. She goes to the doctor every day just to get a shot, and shots are the only thing she does when partying, so I think you can give her a shot. Or, pff, believe it or not, if you were to shoot danger, she would not be into it. Hashtag true story. Nathan, don't fuck me on this. Uh... Nathan, if you fuck me on this, I'm going to be real sad. What do you want? Do you want to get shot? Shoot me. <laughs> shoot Jane. Shoot him. Shoot you me. want me to shoot him? Okay. Yeah. Shoot me. Whoa. That's convenient. I have the feeling dating me could increase someone's chances of getting shot or stabbed. You don't get to be as big an asshole as me without making some enemies along the way. I would feel bad if my loved one was to get shot because of me, but knowing danger is so into getting shot is a relief. I fucking yeah. hate guilt. Yeah. Alright, it seems like my heart isn't being a drunk idiot this time. I might be onto something. Nice. And who knows, if she is so into getting shot, I might add some spice into my foreplay, if you know what I mean. I mean shooting danger before having sex with her, just to be clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got Wowie, it. Wowie, you're welcome, Danger. <laughs> Both for getting you some demon dick and for the blood loss yeah. you're about to experience. Fuck yeah. You had too much blood anyway. Accurate. You get plus three charm for being such a good friend. Yeah, I'm a good friend. Watch well, trades places. Nathan, you are a good friend. Everybody chooses a movie. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Fight Tokyo Club. Drift. Elephant Man. <laughs> wow, that that's, was fast. That's a callback. That's a callback to earlier. <laughs> How do we feel about Drillbit Taylor? Nice. Oh, oh shit. Good Player one. order is decided based on how idiotic it would be to do a 10-hour remake of the selected movie. What were they? I'm Drillbit Taylor. Yeah, Drillbit Taylor for sure. That'd definitely be the most stupid. But then we've got yeah. Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Elephant uh -huh. Man. Tokyo Drift. I would absolutely watch a 10-hour cut. Of yeah, Tokyo. I, I, yeah would too. I think I'm last. Elephant Man and and what was yours, Brian? Uh, um, a Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club, there would also be an audience for a 10 hour remake. There would be. So I think maybe. Elephant, Elephant Man, Man, it's too sad. And then Fight Club and then Tokyo Drift. You can't watch that much sad. I actually now want a Tokyo Drift like, 10 hour cut. Brian, we just watched Tokyo Drift the other night because we're it's... watching all the Fast and Furious movies. <gasps> it was a Dog, gift. I, want, I once watched them 
all in one day. No. There were no. Six at the time. There were only six at the time. Watch them. I had a bunch of people over. We made chili and we just watched every single one sequentially. Amazing. And I was simultaneously the best day of my life. And I think I'm a little insane because of it. I probably broke you in a pretty fundamental way. Oh, fuck. I love those movies. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to watch them all again in one day. I'll do it again right now. This is, the best, this is I, the best movies ever fucking made. I do love elephants, but the Sky, movie Elephant Man is not about elephant. It's also, about Sky a, Trek says Tokyo Drift is the worst one. Um, no, the second one. Too is. Fast, Too Furious is the worst one. God, too it's so bad. <laughs> Tokyo Drift has like it. It literally teeters over into so bad it's good. Too Fast, Too Furious just has no cultural value. <laughs> and like no plot. There's nothing. It it's makes no so sense. Bad. There's a it's weird so... romance between Paul Walker and um, what's her face, but like for a second, like there was no build up to it and there was no reward from it. They, they just once. smooch once. <laughs> um, they don't get legitimately good till five, but three is the only good one of that original first four. Yeah. Um, All right. I'm going to go to the auditorium because I need more creativity. I got to piss again. I'm not proud of it. It's just how <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> go for it, Brian. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. No, I need that. That's why I came here. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain plus two creativity. All right. Yeah. You were poor as hell. Later, you're carrying around your precious dragon heat when you're spotted by Miranda and Damien? This is Brian's. <gasps> Look at your outfit. Wow, Damien. Oh, should I? I'll be, I'll be. Yeah, her. be Miranda for now. Uh, what was Brian doing? Like a princess voice. Uh, kind of, okay. Wow, Dragon Heat. I love it. That's kind of like, what's your face? Um, also, you may not know this about Damien to look at him, but it turns out that he, too, is a hopeless romantic at heart. Are we reading the same series? I'm in it for the Dragon Dong, Mary. Nothing so bad yet so good as a billionaire dinosaur made me gay. Damien, you are being utterly foul. Don't profane the deep emotional connection between the Harold McDonald and Godivia Galantina. Godiva Gal Galantina. Godiva Galantina. I'm back. I'm deep being your character right now. <laughs> deep emotional connection? Is that why the latest chapter ends with Harold finally boning Godiva and then she wakes up to find him gone? Uh, the cliffhanger must be entirely misleading. People simply don't abuse each other's love and trust that way. I worry about you, Miri. I really, really do. I just desperately want to know what happens next in Dragon Heat. Do you think Harold is capable of being so mean-spirited? Someone said it's pronounced Reginald. True art imitates life. Let's look at Damien's tender messages to see what he's capable of, shall we? Or Harold may or may not be a scoundrel, but love is alive and well. Let me take the both of you on the greatest three-way first date ever to prove it. Well, I have to go for that, right? Fuck yeah. A date? In midst of a school day? Why, my duty, my responsibility, and breeding say no, but my heart says yes! I have a midterm in interdimensional piece 305, so anything's better than that. Oh, huzzah! I do love being courted. Let us flee to the absolutely most romantic day that has ever happened to, ev to me ever! Yay! That's a high bar. Luckily, you're a romance expert, having spent literally all your school days planning for prom, which is a single night of the year, instead of paying attention to the studies that might benefit you later in life. You show up with chocolates, flowers, and a bevy of myrrh slaves from Miranda, and a pack of matches and a gallon of gasoline for Damien. The three of you go on an absolutely splendid date, during which Damien only commits a few murders. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. Yeah, buddy. Zombie fan. Ugh. Uh, let's see. I would like... It's me. It's zombie Ven. It's me. It's you. It's you. Um, money. Money. Library. Give me that, Give me that money. I'm talking about the money, money, money. Oh, look at that picture. 
That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. Nice. This is supposed to have something to do with solving <laughs> algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that no one actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars. Which, unfortunately, is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Wow, monsters are powerful. Yeah. You see Miranda, Vera, and Polly gathered around a table covered in books. Could they be studying? No way! I hereby call this meeting of the boss-ass bitches to order. I've gathered all prior school yearbooks, so we have a clear list of everyone we're better than. That's Brian again. Wow. <laughs> wow, what a great use of your time. Who said that? Oh, great. It's the coven. What are you three doing here? Um, studying? Because this is a library at school? Gasp! Spies! Villains impersonating us! What? What? Don't you see, Vera? These three obviously are evil twins. The middle one is mean and bossy like you. What are you talking about, Polly? We go to class with you. You would know if you the if you three didn't spend all your time doing stupid and mostly illegal stuff. I won't fall for your tricks, evil Vera. Are you implying the original Vera isn't kind of evil herself? And look, Vera, the one to the right has glasses just like Polly. <laughs> I need these to see. And she has dark Skin! She's clearly Dark Polly! Whoa, Polly. Just... no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Bitches is only one letter away from... Witches! Good lord. Say, would you three mind studying somewhere else? You're upsetting my minions. Never! Good grades are the backbone of a bright future. We need all this knowledge to save the world from the big bad. Oh boy. If you don't figure out a way to get the coven out of here, you might have to break up a brawl. Any ideas? Whip out your rooster, which is hate roosters. <laughs> Chop up all the study tables with a big axe. What? Um... Uh, axe. Big axe? Big axe. Thinking fast, yeah, you grab yeah, yeah. the designated library axe and get to work. Fun fact, all rooms at Spooky High School must contain at least one axe due to lobbying by the Axe Murderers of America. <laughs> what? W why? Damn the AMA! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone had a little accident. No, no, I think they're doing that entirely on purpose. <laughs> Well, on purpose or not, it looks like there's no place to study anymore, is there, ladies? Fine, we're leaving, but you haven't seen the last of us. See? That's exactly what our evil duplicates would say. N no, I, we're just... We have a class with you guys next period, did you forget? A class? Who has time for that? We're forming a secret society. Hey, oh, sleepover one. Nice. Nice. Okay, whatever. I guess we won't see you later then. You probably will see them later. Or will you? Uh, who cares? You gain plus two charm and plus one boldness either way. Nice. I'm so charming. Danger's turn. Danger. Uh, danger is going to go outdoor. No, wait, hang up. Uh, yeah, that's all good. You want to go here? Uh, what do I need? Uh, what's what's fun? Fun is fun is the outdoors. outdoors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's creativity? That that's is the auditorium. Uh, auditorium okay, right that's no good. So yeah, let's do uh, let's do fun. Okay. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You're casually chatting with Juan, the small magical Latino cat. You start telling him that hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one? The one involving the beehive, the blow-up doll of the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King. I do know that one. Slowly, lots of people start joining you to hear the story. By the time you say where the Goblin King was, 100 people or so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures all the laughter and it turns into plus two fun. Get fucked. Despite everything else happening around you, you're just solving some Sudokus. But your mind is constantly going back to Damien. I want Stupid Damien. sexy Damien and his idiotic short temper. I love it. You think he could even be your sweetheart, but he seems more I focused so. on being angry 24-7. I want to be focused on me 24-7. 
For God's <laughs> sake, he's the kind of guy that could get angry at a banana. As a matter of fact, your daydreaming is interrupted by the feral screams of Damien, who seems to be insulting an actual banana. Insult me, Daddy. You stupid yellow fruit! What's your deal? Do you think you're richer in potassium than me? No one is richer in potassium than Damien fucking LaVey! <laughs> Gah! Is he even for real? Stupid sexy Damien. No, you need to put a stop to this nonsense before it escalates somehow into arson. Defend the banana's honor, or eat the banana. I'm gonna eat that fucking banana. Sensually. You get closer to Damien in a very cool and quiet way. Huh? Why don't you mind your own business, noob? But you don't mind your own business. You eat the banana instead. <laughs> what? Ah! Oh, look at Damien. He's losing his shit again. Yeah, he was bullying that banana, but it seems he's all bark and no bite. <laughs> Not like danger, huh? Indeed. Danger seems to be all bite for sure. Kind of sexy. It is alluring, being all bite, not the bullying. Bullying is never alluring, nor sexy. Remember that, kids. Remember, Remember that. that, kids. <laughs> True that, unless you're bullying a banana. I mean, who cares? That's just stupid. Damien is so stupid. Hashtag winners don't bully bananas, they just eat them. It's a long hashtag. Also, oh, people are ragging on me for this accent. It's not a Long Island accent, it's a Valley Girl accent that I'm doing. Lucario! Which is not Long Island. Hashtag, hashtag Damon is a stupid banana bully. Gah, not again. This is it. This is the last time you dare fuck with me, you bastard. On prom night, we're gonna share a very special dance. Spoiler alert, it will hurt. It will. Ooh, that's a prom fight on prom night. Damien versus Danger, instant classic. We're gonna fall in love. Interesting. I might attend. Damn right. You all have tickets to watch how I reduce Danger's bones into a sad, shapeless pulp. No. Yes, free tickets. Hashtag prom fight on prom night. And so you've led yourself to your own potential death. Nice. At least you gain plus three boldness for doing so of your own volition. Get Good fucked. Lord. Pasta. Good lord. I have two options, class or bathrooms. Have I been to the bathrooms yet? You what? also have a lot of money. You could buy something. I could buy something. Let's buy something. You want to buy something? Yeah, let's buy something. Oh, you missed me and my shit, huh? Worry no more. All this shit can be yours if you have the money. Not me, though. So you can afford any of this. Oh, there's no more vent things, though. I think maybe the time for yeah, initiating events is over. Yeah, I think I ran out over. of time. Well, this was a waste. Well, you can get a non-event item, like how the sexy. I think it raises stats. Uh, uh, or a fake badass tattoo. Uh, give me a fake badass tattoo. Why not? Alrighty. Better. Ah, uh, nothing better than the smell of money. Well, actually, there, there are many better smells, but you know what I mean, right? It gave you a lot of boldness. Dope. Like, five boldness. Dope. Let's trade places. Player order was decided based on how early you would die during a zombie apocalypse. Ooh, 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 ooh. Nathan's first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm last again. I feel like a zombie apocalypse happens. Nathan would be just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Nathan would be the first one to die. Of it wouldn't even be who would just be like, oh, I'm, I'm not fucking with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I might die second. Because I, I wouldn't want to fuck with it much either. So I'm gonna go second, and then Brian, and then Julia. Yeah. I let's be real. Everyone knows Julia would actually be the most equipped. Yeah, Julia would survive, and we would all. To be, be clear, equipped. no. To be clear, Julia would be fucked. Exactly fourth. <laughs> exactly fourth. <laughs> Zombie Vin, where you want to sit, my dude? Uh. Uh. Take me to the. <laughs> Do you want to go to Paradise City? Oh, won't you please take me home? <laughs> yeah. Is that? Is that what you want to do? I d it's not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll oh, go I to the, the Space Prince. Take, take me to the shop. I want to shop. The shop. Take me down to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, stranger. It's been a while. I've missed you. It's okay. You can look at my stuff. 
Oh, Nathan, I get the present. The present. Give me my free present. Oh, she was boy. Nathan. What does Nathan get? Get something good. I got a, a sock. sock. Oh, what? Oh, you got so much creativity. I lost some stuff, though. But I you... lost all my fun. <laughs> <laughs> Worth. I just uh, love the guy with the sock buggy. Yeah, he's real creative, but no, no, I'm not hanging out with that guy. Could do, with, could do without him. <clears throat> I'm the most creative. I have creativity to rival Brian's. <laughs> Oh god! But I'm more fun, bitch. I'm gonna I don't go, think I'm gonna get anyone. I'm gonna talk to Polly and Vera, I guess. I I haven't made much headway with anyone either. Me neither. You take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. And you do know better, and you do know that yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. It's nothing personal, Tommy boy. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. And that's my fetish, too. Not buying things for people. Having people buy things for me. Duh. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of us- to take care of both of us. You know what they say. True friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Is that a bad link? Oh, it's another virus link. Go delete Another that. virus link? Why does this keep happening? I don't know. You guys didn't sing last time. You have to sing when you ban the person. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, yeah. Banned. And... There you go. <laughs> All right. I haven't experienced that. My Twitch channel is so small that I don't get virus links. This is well, this is the first time. It's like just started. Yeah. Oh, uh, congratulations. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides, being handed everything you want on a platter, in this case, the platter being an online money transferring platform, is almost boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much cocaine as I am right now, but I see what you mean. We could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would be interesting. And we could continue to profit even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? He's so obsessed with us. You should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. I don't know. A weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all. But I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos. Hmm. It seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. You can easily grow this arrangement into a business. Just escalate and delegate. Have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money, and have that financial slave go and find a financial slave. Or tell him to marry a llama! I mean, I gotta go chaos. I'm, I'm aiming for Polly as best I can. Alright. So let's go for chaos. Oh my god, yes! That is everything to me! I actually had a dream just like that one time. Except it wasn't a llama, it was an alpaca. And it wasn't a wedding, it was a bar mitzvah. But other than that, it was exactly the same. Yeah, I don't think this is my scene. I'm going to check on my illegal law firm. Catch you weirdos later. I'm texting the financial slave right now, telling him to marry a llama. Oh, he's already typing. Let's see... Tell me, boy, you will never believe this. It turns out the financial slave has actually been talking to a llama for a few months now though a, through a llama dating site. He says he's a commitment phobe and never really defined the terms of his relationship with the llama. And he keeps introducing the llama as a friend, but he knows now it's just because he was scared of being hurt. He's taking this as a sure sign that it is time to be brave and commit to the llama. And they're headed to City Hall for the ceremony right now. And of course he says he'll have to take his leave of our group chat since his heart and wallet now belong to another. Specifically a llama. Aw, isn't that the sweetest love story you've ever heard? I'm so glad we got to make it happen together. That is the sweetest love story you've ever heard. Or something. But hey, maybe you and Polly will end up having a love story of your own. 
Danger. Uh, Danger wants to talk to Damien and Scott. Dangerous Damien. You want to narrate yeah. this one, Julia? Sure. What are you doing? You mess with me and then you try to sit at my table? Head. You just eat in the corner, in silence. Will you die soon? Who knows? Meanwhile, nothing else happens. And if you think this is unfair, next time, don't sit at the table of a person who's expressed his desire to murder you. Totally Damien. not a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> Damien, Way to go, Brian. Fall fucking love. <laughs> Damien, my stats are too good. You're gonna love me. <laughs> Pasta. I guess I'll talk to uh, Fish. Fish Lady. Fish Lady. Fish Lady. You find Liam artfully arranging his food while Miranda diligently sorts her silverware. Neither of them is eating, obviously. Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam, but finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pick is an art, not a science. How hard can it be? It's just silverware. Just silverware? And I'm supposed and I suppose the food in your feed pick food pit. <laughs> food? Fuck me. <laughs> you can do it, Brian. I can get there. I know how you feel, Brian. I just me and Julia, man, in the same fucking we can't read boat. Pick is just food. No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in a post 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 modern industrialized mega society. Well, my silverware is a metaphor for for silverware. Yes, is that not enough? It's more than enough, but can we hurry it along? The lighting is perfect right now, and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silverware aficionado yourself. Maybe you can speed up the selection process while simultaneously demonstrating your knowledge. Try the picture fork. It's a fork for taking pictures of. Nothing conveys elegance and taste like a gloating spoon. That one. Ah, yes, the gloating spoon, the most distinguished of utensils. What's a gloating spoon? Well, of course you wouldn't know about it. Rude. No, no, I wasn't being rude. Rudeness is simply the way one must introduce a gloating spoon. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, of course you didn't. You're not as cultured as I am. Such smug superiority. I am no match for the spoon. <laughs> Miranda produces the gloating spoon with much fanfare. It looks like a regular spoon to you, but then, what do you know, you peasant? You convince Miranda to spend some time with you after lunch, lovingly explaining the spoon's finer points. Even though spoons don't have points. Dope. Let's, Let's trade, trade places. places. Everybody chooses an occupation. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Rocket scientist. Mmm. SoundCloud rapper. There, there it is. <laughs> the dude who used to uh, wipe the king's butt in medieval times. The king's oh, butt wow. wiper. The king's butt wiper. Um, uh, th uh, intern. <laughs> <laughs> Player order is decided based on how weird it would be to see a slutty costume based on the selected occupation. I guess mine's kind of a kink for some people, huh? Yeah, yeah it'd still wiper. be. It's. It'd still be pretty weird to see slutty ass wiper. I think I think Julia's got it. I'm Would pretty sure a slutty weird... scientist is pretty common. <laughs> slutty SoundCloud rapper. I guess that's just a lot of people with face tattoos. Mm -hmm. DJs. <laughs> so are we giving it to Julia? Slutty ass wiper. Yeah. And then I think maybe... all the rest of yeah SoundCloud rapper maybe. I don't know. And then um. Brian's a slutty scientist. Yeah, scientist mine's just intern. yeah, mine's slutty thing. slutty intern though. This yeah. creepy maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe. Intern? But it would definitely be a thing someone was into. Yeah, I think either one. Oh. Which would be weirder to see? It'd be weirder. no. I feel like a slutty scientist would be the least weird thing. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool, fine, good. I go first. We're almost there, guys. Last round before this prom. Pasta. Pasta. All right, where do I want to go? Well, I can't buy anything. Oh, there's no more shopping. 
Uh, wow. bring All that money I got. To... Life. Wake me up! Bring wake me, me up! To the can't auditorium. wake up! Doing stuff. Bring me to the auditorium. I haven't been there. Save me! <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Oh, look at me! I got a mustache. That day, while nice. rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses, to be exact. Oh, thank you. Damn. Roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Mm. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm. It seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet! You gain plus two creativity. Yeah, I'm at five. You're having a very interesting argument with Liam on which would be Plato's favorite emoji, were he to know what emojis are. You've narrowed it down to alien face emoji and paella emoji when Damien interrupts you. Hey, I hereby summon the shitter squad. Please don't call us that. I will submit your petition to the higher powers, Liam. But now let's focus on what's really important, the Kaganer. So I did some research on this Catalan people and their traditions, and oh boy, they fucking rock. Each tradition was more badass than the last. They do this thing called Calcetades, where they eat these calso onions with their fucking hands while drinking wine in the most ludicrous ways because fuck glasses and silverware. Also, there's this Cora folks thing where they basically dress as devils and run down the streets holding pitchforks that end in fireworks while dancing to the drums. They're fucking savages. And then I found out about this other thing called Castellers, which is the thing they do in their festivals where they build human towers just because they can. Who knows why? My safest bet is that it's either a pure display of power or an attempt to reach the sun to punch it in its fucking face. Radical, right? The more I've researched, the more I love these Catalan people. Fucking awesome weirdos. But no clue about the Kaganer thing. Still just a mystery how they started putting a guy taking a shit next to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you know that a few years ago at the Barcelona government, uh... <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you know that a few years ago, the Barcelona government even tried to ban the Kaganer from its city's nativity scene, and the Catalan people got so angry, they forced... Oh, my computer uh, went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hold they on. fought the establishment to keep a random guy <laughs> taking a shit next to Jesus, and they won. And they won. Whoa. Can I... Can I just marry an entire region? You wish, Damien. Or at least have casual sex with it. Probably not. Then I need to satisfy my urges by unveiling this fucking massive mystery, Liam. But how? I mean, even if the tradition has been there for the last several centuries, we don't even know if it's the real depiction of what happened 2,000 years ago during Christ's birth. You're right. We have to travel to... Spain? Well, the tradition is from Catalonia, but the scene depicted is from... Bell in Israel. To Israel, then. Before you know it, you're in Israel with these two monsters. You're excited because everyone knows Israel is the most romantic country bordering the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, now what? We should have thought this through before buying those plane tickets. Go to Bellin and check all the security cameras to know once and for all if a guy was taking a shit while Mary was giving birth to Jesus. <laughs> Go to Bellin and collect all shits in the vicinity in order to discover the true identity of the shitter. Oh, the top one, the top one. <laughs> I don't want to collect shits. The top one? Yeah. Collect the shits, Julia. <laughs> Great thinking as usual, Pasta. I think you can technically label it as some sort of thinking. Liam, focus. Which store do you think is the oldest one here so its camera could have accidentally recorded Jesus' birth? Do you really need me to answer that? Not really. Look, a blockbuster. You know what a blockbuster is, guys? It is a thing that used to be called a video rental store. Back in ancient past, the Romans and the dinosaurs used to buy physical versions of Netflix movies in those places. But back then, the concept of buying wasn't fully developed, and they were forced to give the movies back after a few days. I'm sure they were there when Christ was born. Let's steal its security camera's tapes. And so you do, because you're way past the point of being judgmental with the act of stealing. You start checking the tapes. No, no. This is from last Tuesday. Christ's birth happened way back, like three weeks before that at least. Yes, at least. After checking four months of tapes, the rest of the footage is blank. What a shame. They probably erase all records past four months. 
That's what they want us to believe, Liam. What I believe is that they're trying to hide something from us. Something that might or might not have happened four months ago when Jesus was born. I don't know where to start. Me neither. Ah, Pasta, you've been astute as always. But whoever is keeping the Kaganair secret from us seems to always be two steps ahead of us. For now. Ugh, <sighs> can we go back to school? Sure, but let's visit some shit first. Then you go to a very tongue-in-cheek montage of you three having a great time in Israel, visiting all the historic landmarks and doing all kinds of silly shenanigans. For that, you win plus three fun. Hey. Tummy boy! People are saying that we're way over time. Yeah, we're yeah. just gonna we're just gonna complete the the playthrough. Yeah. Yeah, SRK, let's just finish the fucking Curry, game. Yeah. Just subscribe to Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Are people complaining about more? <laughs> Everyone hates more. They Everyone only wanted to watch a certain more. amount. Uh, I guess we have to end it. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's right, it, we're guys. Done. We'll see you on uh, Sunday. Just before prom. Too bad. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Where, where do you want to go? Where do I want to go? Where I want to go to Charm School or Boldness School. I want to go to Boldness School. Go to Boldness School. That day you skip class intending to spend the term in the bathrooms, but you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you totally gain plus two boldness. You're doing the thing that gives you the most life, reading Dragon Heat, when you're approached by Scott and Liam. Do you want me to take over narration? I don't read these guys. Oh, it's both me. <clears throat> both Nathan. Aha! Oh, God. A fellow connoisseur of the dracophilic arts. Here, Scott. Uh, <clears throat> here, Scott and I are also experts on the topic. An unexpected duo. Yeah, Liam and I are fandom buddies. We love to discuss the things we love on our favorite stuff, swickies, and forums. Wow. <laughs> I'm not great at talking. We're the best <laughs> fandom buds, even if we don't always agree, like with Starco and Markapu thing. Okay, first, let's be clear. I engage in passionate fandom conversations only as an ironic way of celebrating low culture, which I truly despise. Second, for the hundredth time, after spending years in Hecapu's dimension, Marco is now actually in his... 30s, so it isn't right if he dates a 16-year-old girl. These details matter, Scott. Think how wrong it would be for me in my 400s to date people from this school if all of you were actually teenagers instead of being much more conveniently in your 20s. Anyway, enough meta discussion. Scott and I here are in a situation. Even if our opinions differ, we agree our opinions are superior in comparison with the rest of the strangers on the Dragon Heat wiki. I, I'm sorry, I want to read Tas Tiny Castle Guy's comment, which is, Hello, everyone. My name is Markapoo. <laughs> it's a Markiplier joke. It is a Markiplier joke. <clears throat> yes to that. Liam here is, like, super smart, and I'm a good boy. So many ideas should be good, too. My ideas should be good, too. I, 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 I wow. The people <laughs> on the wiki can be really mean sometimes. We need to gain their respect so we can convince them to be good boys too. Scott is right. We need to somehow earn the role of moderators so we can show all those lesser beings who's boss when it comes to the Dragon Heat fandom. But how? I'm sure you'll give us an absurd yet effective idea for a solution, as can be expected from a good old tummy boy. Let's ask them nicely if they can stop behaving like internet trolls and instead start respecting your opinions. Or let's write a powerful fanfic set on the Dragon Heat wiki where you're depicted as the coolest users who should be respected. That seems like creativity. Asking them nicely is probably charm. But I want to write a powerful fanfic. Write a powerful fanfic, So I'm going to go for that. Boy. Do it. No! Not you so fool. Creative. You absolute fool. Oh, I failed the Dragon Heat quest line. <laughs> you did fail the Dragon Heat quest line. Wow. Jacob, to fix this, you're going to actually have to write Dragon Heat fan fiction. I am. Ah, uh, yes. Let's fight wielding art. Ah, uh, yes. Let's fight wielding art as our weapon. Yeah, weapons are fun. Liam opens a new document on his laptop. Come on, Tommy Boy. Amaze us with your fanfic magic. Oh, dang. You never thought you were going to be the one doing the writing. You weren't prepared for this. Let's see what happens. Liam and Scott read as you write. 
Liam and Scott and Tommy Boy were very cool and very nice, and they lived in the community kingdom. And they were so very cool and so very nice that everyone said, hey, Liam and Scott and Tommy Boy are very cool and very nice. We should make Liam and Scott and Tommy Boy our kings. And so Liam and Scott and Tommy Boy were kings of the Dragon Heat wiki community kingdom because they were the most very cool and most very nice in the kingdom. I'm ashamed. Then everyone became centaurs, and they had centaur sex. Now, you're just writing pages and pages of centaur sex. It's perfect, right, Liam? I like the part where she said the three of us were very cool and very nice. It's not perfect, Scott. Also, you can't use centaurification just because. Centaurification is a very delicate fanfic tool that needs to be used under the right circumstances. You done goofed. I goofed. I think Tommy Boy was just trying to fool us into reading her extremely dirty centaur fanfiction. <clears throat> centaurification fic. So not cool. Oh, she almost fooled me by saying we were very cool and very nice. That was very not cool and very not nice. Very not cool and very not nice indeed, my dear Scott. I wasn't trying to fool you. Why do you always have to turn to centaurification when, anxi when anxiety writing? Well, at least you got them to read your extremely dirty centaurification fic. Still, you lose minus two charm and minus one creativity. No! Zombie then! Uh, I should probably go to class at least once, right? Go to class. Da 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 da. That day, you're the first one in class. You sometimes come early because you enjoy talking to the teacher. He's a bit bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and the two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. Look at you, excelling at cliched movie tropes. You gain plus two smarts and plus one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. I forgot Nathan has 23 creativity. Yeah, because my sock. Because <laughs> of your sock puppet. <laughs> oh my word. What a wonderful, beautiful, exciting day. I hope someone can share in my joy. My great aunt Sea Monster and Holy Terror McCracken o Cthulhu has just received an award for her work in Tiprex. She's now one of the leading causes. I want to send her my congratulations, but no one from the POSA service will go near her lair for fear of their lives. Oh, if only some brave hero would volunteer to deliver this important and time sensitive missive. Ugh, I'm always delivering stuff for her. <laughs> Why is a letter of congratulations so time-sensitive, you ask? Well, it's because of, well, you see, it's that these are very special congratulations with instructions to do something congratulatory for herself, you know? Just get her the letter. <laughs> There's something fishy about this request, but you've never let that stop you before. You come up with a foolproof plan. All right, what's the most creative? Hire, Hire Scuber, the underwater taxi service, to deliver the letter for you. Dynamite the toilet, dive into the sewer, and swim there yourself. Okay. That's probably uh, bold. Yeah, Scuber. Scuber. So wealthy. With just a touch of a button, you're able to call a Scuber driver to your school. You give him very specific instructions as to the latitude and longitude, but conveniently leave out the part about the sea monster. A few days later, you see the fruits, de mer, of your labor. Oh, you wonderful person! The letter reached great on sea monster on holy terror McCracken face of Cthulhu with no problem! And she was ever so grateful for this delicious midnight snack. She said she would act on the letter immediately! Act on uh, the congratulations that I sent by thanking me, which she did. So it's all over and neatly wrapped up now. Nothing further happening here. Yep, seems entirely legit. Great Aunt Sea Monster Unholy Terror McCracken Face o Cthulhu gained a crunchy victim of gig culture, and you gained plus three charm. Danger! Danger. Uh, let's see. Danger's gonna go to the gym. Get pumped, Danger. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. But the match isn't as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. Fuck yeah. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic wink ever. Because your bonus is 27. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. 
You gain plus two charm. Get fucked. 21 charm. Scott and Vera shoulder each other out of the way to try and get to you first. Oh, hey, I uh, heard Damien talking about how he's gonna beat you up at prom. Yeah, mess him up. What? Hey, I don't believe in gratuitous violence, unless I'm a werewolf, in which case, one time I ate a kindergartner. You're right, Scott. <laughs> I should look into this upcoming carnage and think of a way of monetizing it. I heard Polly saying Damien was giving away free tickets to watch him skinning danger alive. Such a lack of business perspective is disencouraging. Discouraging. Uh, that, that's something I would say. That's not <laughs> nice. Why haven't I received free tickets? Maybe the not so nice part is the part about you being skinned alive. Anyway, Danger, what are you doing about this? Might I interest you in some sort of Oberlin life insurance? This might be a good time to get a policy. Yeah, Danger, what are you doing about this? Won't you give us free tickets to watch Damien skin you alive? Don't be rude, bro. That's a good question. What are you doing about this? Seems like you're pretty screwed. But maybe if you play your cards right, you can convince one of these two to teach you how to fight. Here's what I'm going to do, Vera. I'm going to give you a hundred bucks and you're going to teach me your secret Oberlin combat style. Or, I don't know, probably die unless some big, strong, good at sports man decides to teach me how to fight. Where would I ever find such a man? Let's do number two. Wait, I'm a big, strong, good at sports man. Me! Yeah, you are. Oh, okay, <laughs> here's what you do. Tell me. Damien comes at you, just turn into a dire wolf and bite his face off. Easy. <laughs> it's not gratuitous violence if it's self-defense gratuitous violence, <laughs> or full moon-induced gratuitous violence. Makes sense. Or, wait, you can't turn into a wolf, right? That's nah. like a werewolf thing. Yeah. Hmm. Oh! Oh, have you heard of punching? Sounds familiar. Well, let me explain to you how it works. Do it. After that, you have a very cool training montage where you punch lots of things. You start by punching a punching bag, but later you punch several trees. Close to the end, you punch a whole tank, and you even punch your various fears and weaknesses in the face. Fuck yeah. Now you feel ready to face stupid sexy Damien in the prom fight on prom night. It will be bloody. You gain wow. plus two boldness and plus one fun. You have almost right. 30 boldness. I am a god. <laughs> Stupid sexy Damien. The monster prom draws near. Okay. I can't ask anyone. Who are you going to ask to prom? Myself. I, none of them? I I can't romance any of them. I don't know what happens if you say none of them. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to say I'm none gonna, of them? I'm going to say none of them. I'm taking me. You, you do this for you, Julia. I do this for me. Ask yes. none of them? Yes. I am a strong independent. I really, I get nothing, huh? Well, it'll, there'll be a cutscene. Oh, later. right, okay. Um, I'm gonna go for Polly, I guess. It's my best bet. Try I don't Polly. think it's gonna work. Yes. What do you think, Zombie Ven? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think anyone's gonna go with me. <laughs> I mean, I, I ran I ran a lot of errands for uh, Miranda, Miranda, but I don't but I don't think my smarts is high enough. A lot of people are saying Miranda. Should we try right, Miranda? I don't have a problem with you. Let's let's go let's go for a Miranda. All let's right. see. And obviously, you want to try Damien. God, yeah. Here's the thing. Okay, so I get it. We have this tension, but I kind of think it's sexy tension, and uh, I want to see what happens, man. I. I think Damien right. and I can, Let's do it. can work this out. Let's do it. Yes. Me. You asked no one to prom. You told yourself you didn't need anyone. I don't. And you know, on a theoretical level, that's completely true. But this just seems like a way of avoiding potential rejection. Mm. We all fear rejection, sweetheart, but it's part of life. Victory is for those who try. Nah. And you haven't. <laughs> Prom night is here, and you can't help but wonder if you had a chance with any of your classmates. I didn't. Those who fail have at least tried, and you, tonight, you failed in your own way without even trying, which has some kind of twisted merit in its own right. Doubts will haunt you till the day you die. Prom was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and now it's gone. <laughs> oh, no, wait. This is a video game. You can try and play again. Lucky bastard. Tell me, boy. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. 
<laughs> Not a chance in the world, darling. You're bored him on a stick. You'd bore me to death. And then what would I be? A meta ghost? Pass. See ya. What a loser. After that, you were forced to abandon your home and join the underground society of sad people who couldn't get a date for Monster Prom. You could join me. Which is a fancy way of saying you had to live the rest of your life in the fucking sewers. <laughs> Gross. You're joining me. Fuck you, Jacob Day. Prom? Sure. How can I say no to my beautiful accomplice? Um, what do I mean by accomplice? I mean, it was clear all this time, right? I stole some eggs from that sea monster and then my serfs cooked up an omelet and you took pictures of the water polo team eating it. <laughs> and remember when we totally stole the addresses of the hull team from the principal giant spider's computer? <laughs> Such good times. Then it was just a matter of delivering the pictures and the addresses of the sea monster who by my calculations will soon be hunting all of these unpolite peasants down. They rejected me, and I'm sure it has always been clear that you do not reject Miranda Vanderbilt. So in a way, it was sort of all them, right? It's been so sweet of you, my charming knight in shining armor. Damn. You feel a bit bad, both for being an accomplice to multiple manslaughter and for feeling weirdly aroused by Miranda's ruthlessness. Yeah. But love is blind, so a date it is. Nathan, a date! You have a delightful evening, and in the end, isn't that what counts? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, Miranda even invites you to her house to show you the corpses of the water polo team, which she's had stolen from their funerals. Amazing. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Oh, dang. Whoa. Oh, dang. Oh, yeah. still, oh, wow. You're still troubled by the fact that kind of excites you, but obviously Miranda isn't troubled about being excited by a successful, merciless vendetta. <laughs> Yeah. People want a Nathan Wee. So you end up celebrating your victory and feasting over what's left of her enemies. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice, dude. Nathan yeah. got Danger yeah. time. In your cockiest voice, you remind Damien the two of you have a date on prom night. Yeah, fucker, it's a date. Prom night arrives, and your brawl is even scheduled in the official prom promgram. <laughs> the crowd is ready and waiting for your fight. Ooh. Ooh. And damn, do you start fighting. All the advice proves useful and you put up a hell of a good fight. Punch after punch, you start to see the thrill in Damien's eyes. He seems almost ecstatic to have found a worthy adversary. Deep down inside, you know violence is never the answer. Yet all the sweat and blood and physical contact is driving you crazy. Then in the middle of that intense tango of violence, you start making out. Fuck yeah. Apparently a good beating was the ultimate turn on for Damien. How is it that everything is ultimately about sex when it comes to young people? Yeah. People start leaving because apparently witnessing free violence is okay, but witnessing a very intense and physical demonstration of love is somehow wrong. <laughs> so you take your prom fight to the bathrooms. Fuck yeah, we do. It turns out that somehow the sex is even more violent than the fight. Some of your ribs end up broken, but damn was it worth it. Wow. Wow. So Brian did fuck Damien. I did fuck Damien. Fuck wow. you good. Wow, there are 1,400 outcomes, huh? We oh, got we both two got new secret, secret endings. endings. Well, look at that. Most likely to never be understood, and most kingdoms invaded. What a treat. Most fuck Damien. Blubber. I can't believe you called your shot, and then you fucked Damien. Those three did fuck weeks Damien. were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. <laughs> Miranda and Damien received an award from Smalltopia for their work as city planners. Smalltopia citizens still insist the award was fake, and they pray for the two of them to stop messing with their city. Polly's drug cooking skills proved to be useful, and she became a chemist for the pharmaceutical industry. Yet, on her free time, she still cooks drugs. Her greatest inventions so far are watermelon-flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriates her. <laughs> she spent her life making connections and building power because she is not part of the game. She plays the game. So be careful. Maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life. And then it was gone. Just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, and there were lots of battles left in the war called Youth. 
Once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. We've still never met Weird Medusa. I know, I want to meet Weird Medusa. I think all the, they're all like item, I think they're all like different event ones that you have to get. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Oh, I, I didn't even this see the credit song. I know it's dope. I didn't even see the item that you need to get to get the blobbered ending available in the store. Were so you I don't even for it? I was. I was trying to. Well, I got blocked on the money front a couple times, so hmm. uh, I think it was too late in the game. Yeah, I think they only show up sometimes, like it's random. Yeah. What you can and can't do. I should have just. I should have just taken one of the event items when they were available, but you know, I got I got a secret uh, Miranda ending where she killed a whole bunch of people. So that you did. Yeah, and then posed nude for you. Yeah, with the sword so, in front of hubba, her. Hubba. So there you go. Oh yeah, we didn't get the hunter at all. In yeah, this I didn't see the bounty run. hunter. The demon hunt or the monster hunter, right? Yeah, the monster hunter the or the the slayer, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. But we got this a few new endings. Had Brian, a good time. Brian, Brian got to fight and fuck. Brian got to fight and fuck. Julio didn't go to prom and, and got scolded for giving up. Yep, that sounds about right. And I got Jacob, rejected I think, and I live in the sewer. I think you could have gotten something if you had not fucked up the, the last thing and I then so cho too. and then chosen no one. I think I fucked up the uh, the dragon heat. Because I think you get I think something fun happens. Well, Next time. Next time. Next time. Um, you miss a hundred percent of the uh, shots. You don't fuck. I, I definitely <laughs> want to play this game again. I would love to play this. Wait, game. We, need, this? we need what to go. This? Unlocked. Prepare to bring chaos and destruction to this realm. It's party time. What is that? Huh? What's that mean? What unlocked. Is that? You have unlocked ten new images in the gallery. Wow. No, no. Back to the first one, guys. We got to play it through again right now. Yeah, right we got to do go. it right now. All nighter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know uh, what the party time thing is. I guess we'll figure out. A, guys, let's play this again sometime. Absolutely. I, I would love to. There's so many I endings I want like to see. To yeah. There's so much. There's so much in this game, and I want to voice that, that happy tiger coach more. Hell yeah. I, want um, I love the happy tiger, tiger coach. coach. Brian, do you have anything you would like to plug before we call it? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a podcast called Brian and Eric Don't Belong Here. It's about ghosts and goblins and shit. It's uh, with my good friend Eric Brenner. Uh, I think it's pretty funny. And uh, follow me on Twitter, Brian is Goblin, or I will disappear. Brian and Eric are both funny good boys, and you should partake of the things they do. Yes. Thank and uh, Nathan's also a funny and good boy. You I already also... know what he does. Yeah, I, uh, sign up for Dropout if you don't already. Uh, <laughs> Nathan's got to get his it. Dropout plug. He's got to get Dropout got... in. I... Actually, no, thank you for doing it. Yeah, literally all of our jobs depend on that. Yeah, all, uh, all of our jobs. <laughs> right if, more, if more people sign up for Dropout, I think I don't have to go to as many meetings. So It's true. It is true. Uh, <laughs> that is true. And we get to keep I'd, our jobs. I'd, I'd appreciate it. Um, We're working on more incentives to make it uh, worth your while. Yeah, so we'll yeah, keep we, you we got, we got some fun stuff in the works. Brian and I uh, have recorded a couple things that I don't know if we're allowed to talk about, but look out for those. They're going to be fun. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I think you're going to like them. Ooh, baby. Well, uh, thanks for hanging, guys. Yeah. Let's see, we, real fast, we got, we got Nathan uh, in a couple... I think we got Jacob on an upcoming thing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I was on one, maybe. It's uh, I don't think we're gonna get Julia on another. But uh, oh, I, the mine, pilot mine got, got thrown in the trash. Julia's is the ultra secret one that only we have <sighs> access to. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, we're gonna be back in uh, in uh, a way out. Yeah. So we'll see you guys then, and we'll do more Monster Prom at some time uh, too, and and try to do more like uh, four people streams. And happy birthday, Stan the Man. Happy birthday, Stan and... the Man. That's ultimately what I want to say. And if you ever want to have me on a, a stream before you finish playing that, let me know. I I yeah, yeah. really yeah. I really enjoy those uh, as a viewer, and I would love to uh, participate. Yeah. Maybe we'll get you on the next one. Cool. All right. Dope. Goodbye, friends. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye, bye. Bye. Later.